I mean, listen, if if a brain surgeon does brain surgery on 20 people and 19 of them die, <laughs> you, you don't can't say, have you're not a brain surgeon. It's brain surgery is hard, man. Well, yeah, but what about all the other fucking brain surgeons who don't fucking kill all their god? Oh patients? my god! You just thank you for that. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast, a show dedicated to talking about all the poggers things in life, like music, content creation, and video games. I am one of your co-hosts, Jesse Kazam, uh, and I am. Uh, What's the, what's the, what's the material girl? I couldn't, I don't oh. know why I kept, I kept wanting to say digital girl. I am a digital girl, but that, those aren't the words. <laughs> I am a, I'm a material I'm a girl. I'm a digital girl world. in a digital yeah. world. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how's it going, dude? I am doing pretty wonderful. Oh, that sounded, that seemed either entirely genuine or absolutely sarcastic no it was it was pretty genuine it was it was pretty genuine I, I just had dinner with the wife and the kids and then we had crumble cookies which are delicious Have you ever had a crumble oh, cookie oh yeah there's some yeah. there's one nearby us and uh whenever meg's parents come over we always Dude, go get some cookies yeah like are... four thousand calories per cookie but they're so damn good yeah well me and you are we are watching our way yeah so that's... you know you know how we are yeah but definitely got to yeah, maintain our girlish figure. Yep, yep. How you doing, man? Uh, How's the flat Earth doc coming? Oh, but it's I, <laughs> I just uh, I've interviewed like three of oh, the. Oh yeah, like, I forgot to four ask or five you about like that. major names, and, and and dude, all of them have been like it makes me it makes me sad that uh, that these days I just like don't. I used to be surrounded by like engineers that were like funny and intelligent and like ironic and you could have a good conversation yeah uh and you know now basically i talk to my wife you my second wife and twitch chat uh so um classic i, I miss yeah i i miss i miss it uh, <laughs> and talking with these guys i'm like damn dude it's just so much fun just shooting the shit with yeah uh, yeah with people who are like interested in these for sure obscure nonsense um but also dude remember how i said i think i said on the the uh the episode of the patreon podcast okay uh how i had that procedure and i had the iv and it hit me in the goddamn nerve oh yeah dude, it's gotten it's gotten about 50 times worse worse i can't i can't even i can't reach my i can't reach my mute button dude like, I, legitimately uh... i'm going to urgent care tomorrow morning it's because uh... I'm, I'm genuinely very worried Bro, yeah, that's, that's I don't know, I'm so sorry. That is brutal because I wanted to throw up just listening to you tell the story about what happened, and does it? So you were saying it feels like, uh, what did you feel like? Your hand was on fire when you? Oh, the elect, you when like electricity happened, when you? Well, it felt like it was on fire, and then now if I so I'll do it with my other hand. If I do this like any kind of extension yeah. or this or this or this it's just electricity like i'm being tased on my hand because apparently there's the radial nerve so it was right here that they would try to do the iv yeah which is oh i, I don't know why because they always do it here and it's always fine yeah um but that and it hit hit that nerve, and that nerve goes like into your hand and up, dude. It's so it sucks so bad, dude. I've literally just been like chicken winging oh. because I I'm just getting shocked. That is like, crazy. Every time. So now it's like, what do I do? Do I call my doctor? Do I call a fucking lawyer? Like I don't know. Yeah, dude. <laughs> go to the doctor first, but oh, brutal, brutal. Yeah, I, I I couldn't. I would not be able to play like a, a shooter. I couldn't. Yeah, that's like turning your wrist really quickly. Oh, I feel yeah, like we no just, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. So thank God for Balotro, right? Yeah, thank <laughs> God for that. But uh, what, you you you've been talking it up. I, I saw that there was a new event. We've been talking it up. We've been talking it up. So uh, so some interesting stuff. Um, yeah, I I was gonna pull up but there's no patch notes. So basically yesterday they were like, hey, we're doing a patch tomorrow. Game will be down for a few hours. 
So I think a lot of people were expecting, maybe hoping for like a patch, some bug fixes, you know what I mean? Something, I don't know. Um, but we got, we got an event and we got a pretty fascinating event. Um, it, so they dropped a video. Okay. And it was like a la Chronicles of Rigi, like real life video, but, but it was just two dudes sitting in the snow at a campfire talking and like one of them was like, oh, haven't you heard the story of... I forget what it's called. I think it's like a real folklore like in Russia. But basically, they talked about the cold weather and how they can't believe it's this cold, but spring is coming. And then that reminded them of this like folklore. And the thing is, is like, I don't know, that there's all these like bad evil demon spirits. But then if you light a bonfire or something, the spirit of spring will come give you gifts like very you know folklory you know like a like not a fairy tale what's the um like hansel and gretel and stuff like that they're not fairy tales like what are those Puck, called pucks it's pucks it's honey pucks a cheeky phil yep like a no like a fable nursery rhyme no i don't remember anyways it's like that so they weren't being serious but he was like describing like oh yeah like this thing so we got that video which had some cool like vibes in it and then and then he gets up and they leave and then there's a little a flower poking through the snow okay and so then we get in game and it's snowing again it's winter like full snow again and now w the way it works it took us a while to figure it all out on every map that there is an outside so every map at factory and labs there's three like bonfires like but not they're not lit they're like effigies or whatever i don't know what you call it it's all the wood it's it, they're huge they're like 12 feet tall and there's on every map there's three and they're always like relatively close to each other but not mm -hmm. super close you can't always see them all but they're going to be in a similar location and there's like 400 scavs <laughs> guarding them and they're like somewhere between they're not rogues and they're not cultists, but they're not regular scavs. They have like some interesting kits and um, uh, I th like whatever. But there's a bunch. I mean, there's legitimately probably like 25 of like, whatever this new classification of scav is guarding these bonfire things, pyres. And you have to light them on fire with you have to shoot them with tracer rounds. It's the only way to light them on fire. Like, no other round will work at any caliber, but it has to be a tracer round. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you shoot them with tracer rounds. Because that's what tracer rounds, they just have fl the, like, yeah. flaming arrows. I know. It would be, like, I. it's understandable because we don't have, like, Zibbo lighters or flares or anything like that in the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, survival lighters, matches, <laughs> none of that stuff. Like even a grenade is yeah. less, uh, it's less unrealistic. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, you shoot them with tracer rounds and they ignite. And the, the shtick is you have to ignite all three pyres and they'll go out after like 10 or 15 seconds. And you have to keep them all lit. You have to like go through and make sure they're all lit and they all stay lit for like some amount of time, probably like a minute. And then... Oh, wait, a tracer round. Sorry, before Reddit and Twitter come at us, tracer rounds, usually highly flammable metallic fuels such as magnesium. Tracer doesn't stop burning until its fuel is depleted, which can result in massive fires. Okay. Oh, right, don't, don't, you really don't... can't start fires with tracers? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, don't fucking at me. Okay? I, thought, I thought starting fires with tracer rounds was akin to like shooting a propane tank with a nine mil in it exploding. Like I thought that was just like movie magic. Like, well, wait, that, that would probably cause it would an just, explosion. It would just leak propane. Wouldn't it? Like it wouldn't actually, I mean, it wouldn't like, well, no, it, I mean, it could spark. And because it's, propane, I guess it it's like could. Gas. Yeah. What you're talking about is shooting like liquid gasoline mm -hmm. from a car or, yeah. or, or, or a fuel tank on a car. Yes. Yeah, so a fuel that tank wouldn't explode with like a nine mil, like just regular. And yeah, then that the car explode, explodes. Shooting okay. a propane tank. So I have a feeling like it has a good chance of exploding. Trace around starting fires was more like that. Um, but it was phosphorus. Maybe. But maybe anyway. I'm wrong. Anyways, so 
you um you shoot all three and then you keep them lit until for like a minute oh god I, oh god sorry my windows started freaking out you keep them lit for like a minute and then you hear uh so you you played this wipe so you've heard like not the specific audio but the way they're processing this audio when you complete an achievement like uh like when you died the yeah. first time or whatever it's like it's just um it's hard to describe but it's just like audio right it's almost like somebody started spotify it's not directional it has no occlusion it's just like the little bit of ding it's the same thing as like when you complete a quest or whatever this just like mp3 file plays to let you know that you're done and it's birds chirping in the distance and everyone on the map hears it like, no, even if you're not close to it, I think. Wait, it's what? It's super weird. And it lets you know that the whatever, the ritual has been complete and the spirit of spring is now on the map. And this, Why is this so cringy? And the spirit of spring is just Zarachi <laughs> with a slightly greener ghillie suit and no skull mask. <laughs> and, and Mardi Gras beads? Yeah. <laughs> The fuck is you? What are you talking about, dude? What? I don't know. I don't know. And the spirit of spring. And he, the... I forget his name. And he runs up to you, and he drops things for you. He gives you gifts because that's what they said. He in says, "You'll never get me." I'm sending him a fucking rainbow. Yes, comes. I, sorry, he's I, a leprechaun. I can't take this seriously, dude. It's what? yeah, dude. Uh, he's the berries and cream guy from the Star Wars <laughs> commercial. Um. Okay, so every map outside, the things can spawn in like a bunch of different places. So we played customs mostly. The three pyres can spawn outside a fortress. They can spawn by old gas. They can spawn um, by crack house. They can spawn by dorms. They can spawn by big red. So it's like, so you don't know where they spawn. When they spawn, there's a bunch of AI. They're not as easy to kill as regular scavs, but they're not as like OP crazy as cultists. You kill like the 20 or 30 of them. You fend off PMCs. You light the pyres. You keep them lit. The spirit of spring comes and gives you a gift. And it took us three hours to get it done once because anytime there's a new event, right? It's like everybody that can get to their computer hops on so it was mm -hmm. just like pvp slaughterhouse just like and then there's 30 of these ai so it's just like you you can't get to a position we're still trying to figure out how to light them it took us forever to light one and it was like fighting we were fighting tooth and nail we finally had a customs raid we killed a few players it looks like all the other players left or died we wiped all the scavs we, um, I, I had died so many times. I stopped even bringing in tracer rounds to fire the thing up. Cause I, I, I stopped believing it was possible. But then, so then I was like, we were running all over the map. I found a scav AK and a box of T, uh, T45 ammo. And I was like, okay, I got tracers and we lit them all and we did it. And he pops up the little Zarachi guy and he goes like this. You know, and we run up to him and he drops one FP100 filter on the ground and then runs away. Hmm. And I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> okay. Wait, is, that the, is that the like the water, the blue water? No, filter? it's the big one that you, you that you use in the, oh, the filter oh, oh. to like increase your skills. Are those worth anything now? No, I mean, uh, 150K, 200K. Like... Oh, and it, but so he, and he it was three of us, script. and he only dropped one. He only dropped one item. Yeah, I mean, there's no way they would have handled. I know. And so, and then we did it again, and he dropped a single bottle of whiskey, <laughs> which is like 17K. So now I've seen pictures, I've seen screenshots of him dropping a yellow labs key card. Um, but uh yeah that's uh that's the event now here here's the thing there's layers this this event's like an onion okay it's got layers um 
some interesting thing. One, I want to say right from the get, this is uh, very much so like this is kind of a reskinned of the Halloween event they did. Remember, I was telling you about that the cultists and the lasers. The Halloween plus Christmas, right? Yeah. It's like Santa yeah. plus the lasers. It was like the cultists and the lasers. And if you stop the thing or if you let them do it, the undead Zarachi comes and he's like, Papa, you know, that was like a whole thing. So this is kind of a similar thing. I don't say that in a negative way. I think it's cool. This is naturally going to be an event like any event they do that is going to make some people like really not like it and some people really like it me i've seen a, i've seen some streamers say they had a lot of fun i've seen some streamers say that they don't even want to play i think it's super fun because the economy is such in tarkov right now that it's relatively easy to make money um and it's just a catalyst for pvp like all day like, I don't think I died to a cheater today. It was just all day. It was just like nonstop fights, third parties, fourth parties, um, just a lot going on. And for a few days, I think that's fun. If they if this was up for a few weeks, that would be brutal, right? So, like, I'm having fun with the event, like knowing, you know, I've got, you know, 150 million rubles. I, and, and I had some people in chat be like, dude, I was going to do the pocket watch today, but I guess not. I totally get that um, if you're more casual this might be frustrating. The thing is, though, is if you're more, if you're a more casual player, just scav nonstop. Like, I I scaved one time today because, or once or twice because, like, I died and Hambino was still in the raid, and I mm -hmm. scaved and I walked up to find I had a PMC with a level five rig, a level four helmet, and an RSAS with a voodoo on it, and I just picked it all up and left because like it's just it. There's dead PMCs everywhere. So if you are a more casual player and you don't like that experience, definitely scab because there's going to be dead PMCs all over the place. I died like four or five times to the AI today and my body is just sitting there for you guys to go take the loot. So so I say this front and center. Uh, I've been saying for a while that I want, I want events. This is a cool PvP focused event. Uh, I'm having fun. Like, like if I, I want to say BSG, thank you for doing events because it, it keeps it fresh and fun. I will say what's interesting is this is very much so and and this is kind of a this has nothing to do with this event and more these types of events which is that the these types of events make it borderline impossible to play as a solo and engage in the event like yeah I played I played for a little over an hour at off time NA 8 a.m. on a weekday okay I didn't survive. I didn't even come close to surviving a single raid. It was just like 11 level 60s at this everywhere. You know what I mean? It's just there's no way to do it. And then the way this event is actually set up, those pyres, you have to be like within 10 meters to light them. You can't shoot them with tracers from like 200 meters away. And they're far okay. enough away that I don't know on some of the maps, some of where they were. I actually don't know if I could keep them lit solo like if there was no one else on the map i don't know if i could run to all three and keep them lit because you have to keep them lit so it's a very uh, unfriendly event to solos now here's yeah. the thing though i don't inherently think that's bad what so a lot of people have given that feedback and been like this event sucks you know i, I play solo whatever i necessarily i come from the thing where i don't wish that they made this event more solo friendly I wish not all of their events were like this. And I wish there were more events that were maybe more solo friendly. Like I was trying to think today and I didn't get very far, but I was like, what would an event, what would an event look like that was like really engageable solo? Are, are you trying to maybe find a certain amount of things or like, you know, is, is there a way? Because anytime you say, hey, on every map, there's going to be one place on the map where the event is happening. Obviously, the ne the very next step is everyone's going to descend on that location, which makes it a really hard thing to like engage with solo. So I, I like these events and I and so I'm saying BSG, good job. I think these events should stay. I think it would be cool to like because this seems like the third or fourth kind of flavor of this style event where like this is the place on the map. This cool thing is happening. You have to go here and defend it for X amount of time. Then something else cool happens. This is like the third or fourth flavor of that. And I'm vibing with them. But what if we did some other events where it wasn't that and there was something that like you really could feel like if you played more casually or as a solo player that you could engage with. 
And maybe variety is the answer, not changing this event to make it more solo friendly. You know what I mean? That So that's yeah, kind of yeah. what I was thinking. But I understand the feedback because it is basically impossible to do solo. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I wonder if like how much of that relies on like you have to get lucky and hope that other people are independently doing. Yeah. The other elements of it, right? Because like how how many did you say are the light? Three. And they're just far enough away to make it like a pain or maybe even impossible. Um, now, they add, there are some other things involved here. So like there are some environmental effects. If you get close to the like little spirit demons, I don't know, the, the scavs that aren't scavs, uh, you, you start to freeze. The edges of your screen go like almost frozen. I don't know what that effect does. I I think it's only a visual effect. Let me know if uh, anyone in the chat knows. Um, but it like your edges, the edges of your screen, and you get a little like it's a little snowflake symbol up in your status effects thing. It's weird. And then when you light the fire, if you're close to the fire, your stamina regains super quickly, and you have infinite stamina. If you're close to the fire, you get like a little sun, like you're warm and rested, and you get like infinite stamina. What, what, while you're there? While you're close to the fire once you've like lit how, one. How close, though? Probably like 25, 30 meters. Wait, but why do you... But you can run for 25 or 30 meters and not run out of stamina. So I know, but the... now I can run for 25 meters, and when I get to the threshold, I have full stamina, and I can keep running. <laughs> or if you're running between them, you basically never lose stamina. Huh. Um... Okay. So there's like some environmental effects there. Uh, and then what else? Oh, he is unkillable. The spirit of spring. Uh, and we thought undead Zarachi was unkillable until we found out he had like, like 1800 HP in each limb. And then people killed him. Um, this guy, I saw a clip. Axel tweeted a clip of him. He had like six other people. Like they all like, I guess they voiped because it was too big for a squad. And, they all were pouring into him for like 45 se I mean, like they probably did 50,000, 100,000 damage to him. And he was just like tanking it. There was blood everywhere. And he never like, he never, I don't even think he healed. Like I, I actually think this is the first AI hard coded in the map that is properly unkillable. If you shoot at him, he'll aggro you and he'll kill you. He spawns with like G28s or AXMCs or something like that. Um, but mm. uh, yeah. So that is the event. It's uh once again, I like it. I I'm I like it and I understand why people wouldn't. Like, you know, of course all day it was like elevant, stupid, this is dumb, whatever. I understand it. It's rough for solos, it's rough if you're trying to get some quests done. Um but at the same time it's like we're, I don't know. I feel like the feedback and and I think we've talked about this before where people give feedback and then something changes and people give feedback and it's easy for me to be like, you were just complaining about this and now you're complaining about that, but it's different people. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's hard for me to remember that. It feels yeah, like, yeah. it feels like everyone was complaining Tarka was boring and then they do this change and it's like, oh my God, why? It's like, it's going to be here for four days, right? Like, let's do some change, but it's probably different people giving that feedback. And I, so I understand that. Um, I think it's going to be here until... So we got a, one of those new website pages and there's a global counter and we have to light a million bonfires. Um, and then that's when the event ends, like as a community. Let's see where we're at. We're at 100,000. We're at 96,000 um, in 12 hours-ish. A little under 12 hours, we're at 100,000. So seems like it'll go through the weekend. You know, it'll be a few days. And then the whole thing... What's interesting is that the whole thing is like about bringing spring. Like he, like the, you summon the spirit of spring or whatever. And so I'm assuming, I'm wondering if they had planned the snow to stay the whole time until now, but everyone was complaining about the snow. So they took it away, but then they brought it back because they had this event planned. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it, you want to know, you want to know something crazy? It has not rained in Tarkov this wipe. The entire wipe. Because two, two days into the wipe, we got the snow. And then the snow was just, it was either snowing or sunny. 
And then like a month and a half ago or whatever, a month ago, they took away the snow and it hasn't rained a single time. And that almost once again leads me to believe that they were planning on having the snow all the way through because the, I, it to me, it just makes sense that they had like rain equals N until the spring season. Like they've actually coded in seasons and like in the winter, it can't yeah. rain. It's just going to snow. But then they took away the snow and left it where it couldn't rain. And then everyone's like, it's going to just rain nonstop during the spring. <laughs> Which would be huh. awful. Yeah. Oh God. We we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So event. Some people hate it. Some people love it. Hardest solos. Uh it's all I haven't seen I haven't seen anything overwhelmingly toxic. It's all understandable. Any event that's done at all is gonna piss some people off and excite some people. That's like just natural. I feel like you could say that about just about any game. Uh I had fun. It was a great PvP catalyst. If you are trying to do, get your pocket watch quest done, I would say probably don't play this weekend. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, that's a... That is the event. Now, the timing of the event is maybe a little rough um, because there has been some dialogue over this past few... This past week-ish about just like the state of Tarkov and where we're at and how things are feeling. And it's so funny because like, did you see Landmark's tweet? Okay. I saw it was it was like an hour after you. Actually, it was a few hours after you had told me. That's on, all I wanted to say. Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Was that basically you were like Tarkov. We had this great wipe and then but it feels like it's in the worst state, you know, it's ever been in. And then later on that day, yeah. I actually like double check the time and I'm like, I wonder if Jesse was like not repeating, but like saying what like what landmark, but no landmark had said it like six it hours later. It makes me so happy that you, because that's all I wanted to bring up with the landmark tweet. It's so funny. Landmark tweeting his opinion on Tarkov is not news. And I don't say that as disrespect to landmark. I say it as respect to landmark. He tweeted, it was like, uh, Tarkov is in a really rough place and you guys are asleep at the wheel at Battlestate Games. And it was so funny that, the reaction to that because it was like it, it, it was so funny on so many levels because it it's just it's news when somebody of landmark's caliber tweets about tarkov but it really shouldn't be it's just a dude tweeting like if you go in his stream he says that all the time i'm i'm considered one of the positive guys and i complain in my stream all the time so it was like just a one sentence tweet to have stirred up so much when every single one of us streamers complains about Tarkov all day on our streams. It was just so funny that that was, it erupted, you know what I mean? And there was a lot of like, you know, that's not fair criticism. And it's like, sometimes, you know, Twitter isn't always a place for fair criticism. It's not always like, you don't have to write a dissertation. Sometimes you just have an opinion, you know what I mean? So, uh, so I didn't even bring up the landmark tweet to like talk about it as news. It was that was the only thing I wanted, and it's so funny that you did it. Was eight hours or six hours before that uh, we were offline, we were recording the pod, the Patreon episode of the podcast, and I was like, this wipe. I was like, two things are true, Veritas. This was the best wipe we've ever had. And already Tarkov is in one of the worst states it's ever been in. And he was like, and I was like, we'll talk about that on Thursday. And then it was like six hours later, Landmark tweeted that. And I felt so vindicated, just the the sharing of the sentiment. And I either had some of the people that I play with who were also normally like way on the like positive side, like let's cut BSG some slack, let's da, 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 da. I had people message me and be like, I don't know why, but like, I agree. Like that resonated with me. Like a few other, I was like, dude, people are feeling it. So. Bro, I have a on my desktop on my laptop. I have uh, a folder full of screenshots of big positive Tarkov creators complaining about the game. I just have <laughs> screenshots, and it's it's. I, oh, every now and then I open it up and I read them, and I smile, and then I close the window. You know, it's like all the people who are yeah 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 historically so positive, right? Like I remember yeah. Glorious was one of those guys that was like always hundred percent die to the craziest bullshit, and he'd always be like. GG. Yep. You know, he would never be like, he's fucking, you know. And then I remember seeing like a bunch of tweets. <laughs> yeah. At, at some point where yeah. he was like, Tarkov feels like shit. You know, I forget exactly. I'm paraphrasing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But just like complaining about the state of the game or cheaters or whatever. And yeah. 
and uh yeah then i, I started to collect screenshots uh <laughs> that's so funny um just so that people can don't say that i'm the only one that complains so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to do what veritas tries to help me to do which is like not over qualify every one of my statements because this is my opinion and it's my podcast god damn it i can say what i want but know that all of this comes from a place of just like obviously i still love the game and i play it all the time so i i basically i was like we should explore that on the podcast when i said that because i truly do feel that this was the greatest wipe we've ever had and i feel that tarkov is in a really bad spot right now and people have a really hard time believing that those things can coexist. And I believe very firmly that those things coexist. And I want to know why, because it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, because, um, what was I going to say? Uh, because they're related to different things. I think this was the greatest wipe of all time, but not the best possible wipe. Does that make sense? The best possible yeah. wipe would have been <laughs> not changing the recoil, not adding vaulting, not doing that. But we tightened up the anti-cheat. The net code is like up to snuff with AAA games and the audio is passable. Like that would have been the best possible wipe. But instead, what we got was more actual game altering features in better states than we've ever gotten them. Normally, we will get a wipe with one or two features that might actually alter the way a raid plays. And those things are traditionally very buggy and take a long time to iron out. This wipe, we got five things that affect gameplay more than average, and they were at a way above average quality. So by that standard, the wipe was really good. It made every gun feel viable. The early wipe economy was much better than it had been before. They ruined that though, but early wipe economy was much better than it had been before. Vaulting was a huge, actually like viable and fun game changing way to traverse the map. And traversal is an extremely important thing in the game. The left shoulder swapping was is super fun to use. A lot of... Um, a lot of like amazing, amazing, amazing changes that worked well right out of the gate. We didn't have to like, you know, and also after the wipe, we didn't have like um, invisible players. You know what I mean? For three weeks, like we had two wipes ago or whatever. So by that standard, it was the best wipe we had ever had. But I knew from the beginning that uh, it was going to, people were going to get tired of this wipe just as fast as any other wipe, if not faster, because the core gameplay experience or the core fundamentals of it were left unchanged. And, um, you know, I've, I've talked about this before, how I think that like every wipe, more people get more frustrated with Tarkov quicker because you have another wipe behind you, you know, like because every wipe is the same in terms of like how you progress and, and whatever, you know, if last wipe was your first wipe and you got to level 10, you're this wipe getting to level 10 again is annoying, but getting from 10 to 20 is fun because it's new. And then next wipe, if you get to level 30, getting to level 20 is boring because you've done all these quests before, but getting to level 30 is fun. And it's like every wipe, more people go into the category of like, I've done all this before. These quests aren't, you know, fun or whatever. And, and, you know, they kind of like funnel into that area. And so this wipe, I was like, the recoil is amazing and is genuinely going to change what guns are viable for so much longer. Vaulting is great. Um, the snow is really cool. The, and it was a surprise. Left shoulder shooting is great. All this stuff is great, but none of it affects what really frustrates people <laughs> four months into a wipe. Does that make sense? Um, everything you're saying is true. I it just doesn't. So let let, let me yeah 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 let me say what is going through my head. The idea that Tarkov is in a bad state right now. Yeah. Period. Or it's in the worst state ever. Period. Whatever. Like those things. We 
always had bad sound, always had bad yeah. net code, always had cheaters yeah, all yeah, over yeah. the place, always had tons of quality of life issues. Yeah. But we had worse recoil, worse scavs, worse quests, less guns, less stamina when when you get shot, yeah. more stamina burn when you get shot, no vaulting, et cetera. Et cetera. So so let me to me, I I don't understand how those things <laughs> make any let sense. Let me let me let me help you. So that was ten thousand foot view. That was me explaining the like 10,000 foot view, how a wipe can be good, like, and the end wipe can be bad. Because I feel like people have a really hard time even just comprehending that. The reason why I think this is in, like, we're trending month one, month two, we're great, but we're like trending, we're like higher than normal, but we're trending like at a really steep down to like worse than normal. And that has to do with like a few bugs. Uh, like a few bugs that are new ish. I think most of these things have, have been, a, were around last wipe as well, but I don't think they were around for all of last wipe. It's hard to pin down, but new ish on one hand, I think actually separately before we talk about those bugs, I think every wipe you experience Tarkov's audio, your patience for it shortens. Like, I, I think it gets more frustrating. And so I, I've been saying this for a few years now. In 2019, I'm making up these numbers. But in 2019, I'd wager that, like, of all the people actively playing the game, 60 to 80% of them were, this was their first or second wipe. Now, I would say that that number is, I think, maybe 10% of the people that play, it's their first or second wipe. I think, like, and that's natural, right? Any game that goes through, it's like Pal World, right? Pal World will never have another moment where a greater amount of people of the game are new, right? Like they just, they had so many people download the game and people might come back to the game with big updates. But from now moving on, they had such a great launch that it would be hard to acquire new users because of how many people you reach. I think Tarkov is at that where like they had 2019, 2020 was such an insane reach that now whenever they do wipes, it's mostly people coming back. And that always it does attract some new players, but I think the ratio. So I think, Audio, netcode, cheating, and stuff like that, the longer somebody plays Tarkov, the more frustrated they get with those things. And the more a larger percentage of the community gets frustrated with things, the worse everything feels. So that's one, one side of the equation. Did you, do you have... You, yeah, okay, I, I didn't know if no, you I, I wanted to I, let you finish. I, I was going to go, but what do you think about that? Um. Oh, I feel like someone who was drafted into Vietnam and listening to like a 14 year old kid talk about how hard his life is because yeah Game Boy. yeah like the game is just objectively for better sure than it was for the three years I was complaining about it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and now everybody's saying how bad it is um, and it, it actually makes me mad not because yeah like they everybody has it's like the contrast of like for sure Objectively better in objectively better, not in the ways you used to complain about the game. Outs recoil is the only one, is the big one I'll give. As we all used to complain about the recoil and the so recoil outside, is outside of you getting you turning into me, yeah. which is tired, yeah, sick yeah, and yeah. tired of being sick and tired sick about and tired. the same old bullshit over yeah. and over again, right? Yeah. Outside of that mounting Let's say you were to start the game, yeah, six months ago, yeah, and and then play through the next six months and experience yeah. what we have now. Versus you started in twenty twenty, yeah. you know, or twenty twenty two or whatever, right? Sure. You played through some of the worst six months there. Do you think that the game is is worse than it was then? No. Uh, yes and no. So yeah, let, okay. I, I need to I need to go through some of these some of these things to to so we can so yeah, we yeah by about. all means no 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 but like I I get where you're coming from I get where you're coming from and that makes sense. Here's the thing. Here are some of the bugs that we've been dealing with for the past few months that are like really destroying the integrity of like how this game plays. Uh, are you familiar with like the binaural audio pop? I've never heard the new yeah. version of it. There, and I cr I cringe. I have to ask. Yeah, 
do we know is it binaural is that like a thing no. that someone tested i or don't is that know just what everyone's calling Correct. it that is true but for the purposes of so for the purposes of how i'm going to dis uh for what i think it's doing to the game that doesn't matter i we will just call it the binaural pop yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if if you and me were having a conversation about like it and where it's coming from we i would need to do some testing but the, the 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 problem is is that it doesn't really matter whether if this happens with binaural on or not but there used to be because like it's funny you said this you were like uh you you just said like the new one because it, it used to be a rumor like two years ago or whatever that like if you had binaural on and i remember i always had binaural on and i never knew what people were talking about i was like it doesn't happen to me maybe it doesn't happen to everybody with binaural maybe it's not binaural maybe it's like hardware or whatever but i was like you're talking about like you could hear people opening filing cabinets and like unlocking doors yes, or, or yeah. pulling a pin on a grenade. Yeah, yeah, there was that. This, however, <laughs> which was which was the the least, it was the best audio bug we ever yeah, had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The least bad because it was like you hear click, you go, oh, it's nothing. Exactly. That's that's exactly. that's the worst. That's the best the bug old, that we've ever had with audio. The old, I take that over not hearing things. You're so right. The old binaural audio bug was that some sort of action would happen at any distance. It literally could be the other side of the map, and it was sometimes like a pin of a grenade or a filing cabinet. It meant nothing. It did nothing. The new binaural bug, binaural, whatever, is... And I don't know what I don't I don't know what testing has been done. I just don't give a shit. I'm gonna be honest with you. At some no, distance, neither do yeah, I. I just had to ask. No, no, no. At some no, but I'm saying what testing has been done about what I'm about to say. At some okay. distance away, I don't know if it's 80 meters, 100 meters, 120 meters. I don't know if it's consistently the same distance. I don't know. But at some distance away from you, if a player is moving, you hear a a footstep, like a pop, a really pronounced like one footstep of them running. Boom with the binaural accuracy of like, there's a guy that way. And you just, it, someone needs to, someone in chat needs to pull up a clip from somebody streaming. Yeah. And I'll, I, and I can, I can play it. Yeah. And there's a guy that way. So then you just sit and wait and that guy comes in and you just shoot him. It's just like, but so, and, and people wait and people are surprised that there are Bush Wookiees. No, no. Actually, no, that's the thing. The, the, that, like, um, it's so funny because you're, you're out of the Tarkov and I, I'm saying that like genuinely it's, it's funny, like, because you, you don't play it. So why would you, I, I still talk to you as if you play every day. The yeah. sentiment around that has completely shifted from what it was two years ago, a year ago. It was like, why do people do this? Every, I feel like I feel like three weeks ago we had this no, conversation. Everyone in Tarkov is right now is like, yeah, Bushwookie is really the only way to play. It's the best way to play. You get all of this information for free. It's super lame. Like it's just completely. No, shifted mark my words. We think like within understanding. the last two months no. we had this conversation. Maybe that was me holding on to like hating that people play that way, but the the community has shifted to like not. Well, no, not I remember us having of it. It's it's annoying. But it's just, we all understand that this is why people play that way. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, well, I, I remember, I vividly remember having that conversation and being like, what do you expect? Not saying to you. No, we yeah, were yeah. Both, we were both on the same page. Yeah. Um, that, like, that's kind of the way that you have to play. Yeah, yeah. There's too much of a, a penalty to, but then that was, like, so recent that, that, <laughs> So I'm surprised to yeah. hear that the community has since shifted because it, yeah. it feels like fairly recently. Once again, it's still one of the most complained about things like these damn bush wookies. But yeah. everybody knows why people play that way, and and the game and everybody and everybody understands that the game actively promotes that play style, um, or most okay. people do now. So there's the binaural audio pop where you can hear people really pronounced with good directional audio farther than you should, right? And yeah, and uh, it's like an alarm, you know. We have the um. Oh yeah, that conversation was when the wipe happened. Ninety days. Yeah. So three Lots months happened in ninety days. But that's what I'm saying. Remember the whole this whole conversation was like wipe started good, and in ninety days that that's yeah, you said like a year or two ago. Okay, okay, whatever. The other so one of the other ones is the completely silent. Uh, crouch walking movement. Uh, I don't know how up to speed you are on this, but 
if you crouch and scroll wheel all the way down to your slowest speed, you hear yourself moving. Like if you step on glass, if you're walking on wood, if you're moving around, you hear your footsteps, you hear them slow. Nobody on anybody's client, like nobody else hears it. Uh, and, and that's a bug? Like that's a problem? That to me sounds like a feature. No, it's a it's a problem. We It's a problem. Uh, the So the other thing is, uh, and it doesn't matter, you can be 120 kilograms and it's still completely silent. So here's the thing. You asked, is it a bug? We don't know. That's been in the game since last wipe. And we genuinely... I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's a bug, but, but we don't the know. question is, is we, it's like you have the idea of you can't move without... Like yeah. we, when we had this conversation historically, yes. it's always the problem with Tarkov is that you can't move without making infinite yes. noise, so no one moves. And then all of a sudden, yes. you say, "But that doesn't there's a way mean to move without mo noise." And it's like, "Well, wait." But that doesn't. So yeah, don't don't hey, <laughs> don't go down the the path the chatter would go. Veritas, stay with me. Just because X is a problem doesn't mean running as far in the other direction as fast as possible forever until you hit a brick wall is the solution. That's not the solution. Here's the thing. Wait, what isn't the solution? Like just going the complete opposite way. Like we were complaining. Of wait, wait, of what? So of we were what? complaining that you can't move around with no audio. If you could move around, if you could full sprint with no audio, that's not a solution to us saying, I wish you could move around quieter. So, oh, agreed. So that's I, where I, agreed. I, so that's what I'm saying. I see this crouch silent walk as we passed a reasonable solution to what, to the genuine criticism you and me had about not being able to move quietly. We passed the reasonable solution and we're way past that. But a lot of people are still like, well, you complained about no audio. No, no, no. When I have a criticism, I want a reasonable response to it. <laughs> and this is not reasonable, in my opinion, for this, for a few reasons. One. What? Sorry, I, I, I'm not trying to be difficult. No. What isn't reasonable? Making no audio when you're crouched at any distance, at any weight for anyone on the server forever. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that's a bug and it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's it's one of those things. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it, the worst bugs we're talking about right now are the the least bad bugs that Tarkov has ever seen. So no. I'm, I'm waiting to figure out why no. Tarkov sucks so bad. Yeah. Play it. Like, you, yeah. No, thanks. I, <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, why? <laughs> because, the, like. Well, because the community sucks and I don't want to scream. <laughs> That's why. So, th and this is a this is a genuine like this is an analogy. This is a good analogy for you. If we we complained about the recoil for years, if literally every gun in the game, you would hold mouse one and it literally didn't move. No horizontal X or Y. Like you could just you could hit mouse one with your nose, and you were like, "Hey, I think we went too far." And I said, "What do you mean? We complained. This is the best bug ever. We complained about recoil all the time." You'd be like. Come on. That's where we're at here, where we, there was criticism. I believe whatever. And, and that's fu it's funny because I actually you, you have to you have to pull a different example of something that I actually wouldn't like. Yeah. OK, because you probably would like because <laughs> it's like I would. Yeah. Well, I'd be fine with I'd be fine with a fucking laser beam more than, you know, okay. whatever. Um, Will you understand what I'm trying to say? I know. I know exactly. Which what you're is saying. that going swinging. And I'm not trying to gaslight. No, 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 you. no. I know. I know so what I'm saying is swinging the pendulum too far the other way doesn't automatically make it a good solution or an intelligent one or an elegant one or a logical one. And so we shouldn't but we say shouldn't talk about it like it's a solution, though, because it's correct, because it probably it, but we don't know. We don't know, Veritas, if it's a bug or not. I absolutely believe that we don't know. The fact that you hear something different than someone else hears yeah. to me means it's 80 percent. It's a bug and 20 percent. It's not a bug. Man, I just don't think that way anymore i think it's 50 percent likely that bsg made an intentional change that ridiculous and 50 percent likely you're assuming that they could they could accomplish something that they <laughs> intended to do which i don't which is what leans it closer yeah to i guess than that, that little bit pushes it over the 50 it's like they design dumb shit yeah that's a 50 50 whether the thing they design is going to be genius or dumb yeah and there's a 50 50 whether it does exactly what they want or exactly the opposite yeah but and, and here's yeah, here's so. the thing. I, I got to get through some of these. We're going to talk forever. Um, so you have. And, and it's a combination of these things, too. So you have uh, the 
Crouch Silent Audio, which I agree with what you just said, which is whether it's intended or not doesn't matter. It's bad in the sense that like the the your client hearing audio that other people don't hear is ridiculous, right? If something is silent, let it be silent. If something makes noise, let it makes no let it make noise. Like you could make an argument that the silent audio, um, the silent creep is like a good change or, or you can make an argument that it's like, well, this is a response to this thing. But even for that, it would have to be consistent. It would have to be, well, if it makes no audio for them, it makes no audio for me. Like it can't be, mm. you know, that's the most ridiculous thing because even though people do use it in a pinch, if you don't know where the other person is, why would you move? Remember that whole conversation about I can't move silently, so I don't want to move. You still can't move silently for you. So if you're creeping around, you're making noise. If they're creeping around, they're not making noise. So you, it's like you still don't want to move because it only doesn't make audio for them. Now, you want to move a lot more because you we creep on people all the time. But it's not, it's not elegant. And here's the thing is those two bugs I just talked about smash together into a really bad, I don't know, gameplay experience. Because if I'm moving... That you hear me from 100 meters away with positional audio. You then just crouch and walk around and get to a position where you can like attack me and then I don't stand a chance, right? And then I, I, I do the same thing to you. I hear you from super far away and then I just crouch and wait and I can move around freely and it's like, it's just rough. Um, additionally, Excuse me. The packet loss bug where uh, like 15 to 20 seconds into a raid, if you get packet loss, there is no boss. And if you don't get packet loss, there is a boss. This works really well on most maps. Uh, reserve, customs, shoreline, streets, like it works really well interchange being a big one. And so you have people that are try either trying to get their quest done or they're trying to boss farm. And these guys just like run in. If they don't get packet loss, they just like run out. Like interchange is super weird right now. Like I was watching somebody, I won't name them, but I was watching somebody and they were going in naked with an AVT. And if they got packet loss, they would just disconnect. <laughs> Like they wouldn't even run to the extract. And I'm not saying that that happens a lot, but you would be surprised how different an interchange raid feels when kill is there or not. Like if kill is not there, it's like, depending on the what time of day, it's like 50% of the players leave immediately or disconnect. Like they just get out of there because they have that information 13 seconds into a raid. So isn't that what everybody wants is they want the raids to be dead so they can just farm shit. No, that's what seven people want. Yeah, isn't, no, isn't that no? It's not what, well, the, it's not what well, the community minute, minute. wants. I don't. I don't know, man. I I I always got the vibe that that the the average gamer yeah felt like they couldn't compete and they just want to farm shit and not get in fights and. I don't know. And it's also why streamers would go on dead servers yeah, and people yeah, yeah, would yeah. say, oh, that's what I do. I just pick fucking, you know, West Coast in the morning and I do this yeah. and I just play night vision and b because people wanted to avoid the shit. So like all the people that play single player Tarkov, exactly. They don't want that. Yeah. And honestly, when, if I think back to back in the day when I wasn't having fun, it was all because I felt like I couldn't win fights. Yeah. Because of because the game was grabbing the steering wheel from me mm -hmm. and all of the all of these things are there's kind of a bad scented air freshener in the car we're driving and there's like yeah. some road noise that you know but like yeah you're in control of the car it, it, it's leaking gas <laughs> you know but before it was yeah. like someone is stabbing you in the back from the back seat and grabbing the steering wheel you know like i do, like i don't agree so let me ask you this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If 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 there were two branches that you could play on, a drop down where you could play before the wipe or current wipe. 
Which would you choose? Which would be more fun for you to play? Uh, I mean, it depends on how far we go back. I don't know. It depends. Let's say it's six months, eight months before the recoil. Yeah. Well, most of these bugs were in and the the late late last wipe. I understand what you're. None of these bugs I experienced yeah. when I played at the beginning of this wipe for the period of time. I know, like the invisible stuff. Yeah, wasn't, yeah, was, yeah. Wasn't there, but then it came back. Um. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that that to me, I think, would give me an idea for where you're actually coming from. Yeah, I would like. I would play old recoil if these bugs were fixed like i would i would give up old recoil and vaulting for these bugs to be fixed like i would give up everything we gained in this wipe i can't point to a time where i'm confident that at that time all of these bugs weren't in the game does that make sense like you know what i mean so i can't roll back to a specific date but like i personally would would roll it back what we got this wipe like it's it's okay once again not for for the first few weeks, for the first month or two, it was great because once again, it's honeymoon phase. But like playing the game continuously, all of these bugs, all of this stuff completely degradate the um, like the uh, the integrity of a raid is gone. And so I have a gun with low recoil. That's really cool. I don't get to shoot it. Or when I do, I get to shoot it at a guy that has no idea where I'm at. That's not fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, that's that's not fun. Oh, what you're describing is just fucking Tarkov. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I mean, I but, it, it, yeah. You're just going to have to trust me. As somebody that's played almost as long as you, that well, I, what I just I, what yeah. I'm trying to figure out is if you just have gotten to the jaded <laughs> point that I have, where you're just yeah. fucking sick of it. I hate Tarkov. It's the worst game in the world, and I don't want to play it. You couldn't fucking pay me enough money no. to play Tarkov right now, and it's but objectively, it's not that bad. Yeah, I'm just personally. Sick I see of it. that. I see that. You know, like my like like my ex wasn't so bad, but. There's no chance yeah, I would ever yeah, someone yeah, else yeah. would have fun with, you know, yeah. she'd be fine. And but no I fucking way I want that. Very you know I mean? much so recognize that I am becoming more jaded over time. Yeah. But I, I think that's 20% of this, 30% okay. of this. That's that's yeah, where I'm and, at. And I, and I can't say you're wrong yeah. or that I disagree. I'm I'm trying to get in your head to understand. Because like you said, the audio has always been bad. Like, like you, you were saying that before, basically, and correct me if I'm wrong, your point was the audio was bad before. So if the audio is bad now and we have better recoil, how is that not like a net? The game can't be in the worst state it's better. It's ever been in because the audio has always been bad, but now we have better recoil, right? Like that's kind of what you were saying earlier. Like we have better and these other things that add up to net positive. All I can, all I can do is base it on what people describe. Yeah. But if just thinking about, I can crouch walk yeah and people don't hear me even though i hear myself yeah. i can crouch walk people don't hear me and i get notified when people are nearby before i couldn't move without making a ton of noise and i couldn't hear anybody yeah so to me that just sounds better but i'm just guessing no, based yeah, on the way that people yeah. describe it sounds much better to me because i never heard anybody and i just died yeah and then when i saw somebody i tried to shoot them and i couldn't control it yeah so i'm like trying to figure out why yeah to me i'm, I'm sure tarkov sucks ass right now <laughs> I'm just trying to and figure out. I'm not out saying if that. I'm not saying Tarkov is like. I still have fun playing Tarkov. Once again, I'm just. I'm saying that the things we used to complain about, a lot of them, the pendulum swung too far the other way. And in some cases, I, I think I'd rather have it the old way. Now, nobody should have to decide between shit and shit plus. We should just have a better game, right? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, what we're arguing about, which one was better, doesn't matter. We should just have a better game. But what I'm saying is, I was right there with you, all those wipes. Where I was like, man, I never hear anybody at all. And, you know, and like, I make so much noise. And I complained about those things. But I was young. 
I was naive. I didn't realize it could be worse if the pendulum swung the other way. And to me, it's worse to hear people from 150 meters away to be able to have a five-man team be able to literally crab on me and make absolutely no noise. And for them to, because this was something they did last wipe as well, they redid the Comtax for some reason. I don't know why. And, the, and they're just all worse. And they're all worse. And they increase the ranges that they hear you. Yeah. So like the, what we complained about was the engagement distance was zero back in the day. It was, I saw you, you saw me, we started shooting at each other, right? Because, because the audio was so bad. Here's the thing though. You didn't know I was there and I didn't know you were there because the audio was so bad. Now the engagement distance is 400 meters. And if you were looting a filing cabinet when I was running, you know I'm there and you know not to move because I don't know you're there. So the engagement distance was zero and that sucked. But both players, assuming, you know, if you, if you ran up behind me, I would never see you. But if we saw each other, both players, that engagement started at the same time. Now the engagement distance is so far that there is, there is never a fight where it didn't feel like one of us knew way ahead of time that the fight was about to happen. And that, mm -hmm. of course, is going to happen naturally. Like, assuming Tarkov is perfect and the audio is perfect, sometimes you're looting and you hear a guy run up to you, right? Like, th I'm not saying that that should never happen. I'm not saying... I mean, that's the way it always that's was. That's always was, right? What, what, no, no, what, 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 like, when when we had Steam Audio, when it worked... Yeah. Uh, you heard people directionally running yeah. within a reasonable distance. It's not reasonable anymore. And you have a counter to it. Because you can move silently it's an unreasonable distance do you think people are really crouch walking a lot like crab walking <laughs> so i know no, no, no yes let's be fair though <laughs> let's be fair and, and, and again i don't know i just have to i have to push back against the things that just like people say that guy was camping in a bush forever he was just uh, being a, a pansy rat when really he just killed a three man and you ran up on him and he happened to be in the corner. No. Right. So I, if I, how, so how do you know though? This is like the whole, I get killed with thermals in every raid. I, you know how I had to ask, like, how do you know you got killed with a thermal? Are you seeing the people crouch walking? Yes. Well, wait a minute. I'll be running down. A, I'll be running down a hallway and I'll see two people crouch walk out and shoot me. 50%, 50 to 75% of my kills where I kill somebody is me crabbing somebody. Okay. Like, no, I, I, I believe make, you. Yeah. I, wish, I just, no, I, just I, have I understand. To, I have to push back like against these you, you know what? You, you want to know why you have to push back? Because it sounds so crazy what I just said. Like, I understand. Well, yeah, because if you think about it, though, what's the difference between someone crab walking? Like, just take a step back. Let's pause. Yeah. Between someone crab walking and between someone crouched. When you see them, you have a fraction of a second before one of you is dead. Yeah. What does it matter if they were moving silently or not moving? Because if, if I, I have a last known location on somebody and them you, you moving look so slow, dude. Yeah. I just like, bro, I just, you've got to give me something here, man. Like I play the game a wrong. lot. Like I play dude, the game no, a lot. You have to, you, I'm not saying no, you're wrong. I know I'm not gaslighting you. I'm trying to understand because none of this makes any sense to me. And it's not because you're wrong. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying <laughs> to I'm just trying to figure out what yeah. the fuck everybody's talking about. Yeah. Right? Dude. And and historically, lots of people are wrong about lots of things. Yeah. And I've and I've historically had a decent track record at pushing back against assumptions yeah. that people made and not necessarily saying they're wrong, mm -hmm. but just asking questions. Right? There are I'm a just lot. In building seven. I'm just asking questions. There bro. Are, are the birds? Are they drones? I'm just asking questions. There are a Read the literature. lot. There are a lot of places where being able to move completely without audio com like changes a fight. If I have a last known on somebody, but I have to like turn around a corner and heal or reload or something, if I if I'm running up like if I were to have kept, like, if I was about to catch somebody in a bad position, 
where say like I'm running up and they're out in the open or out in like a hallway and shoreline. Traditionally, as I'm running up, they would think like you're naturally think I want to get to a better position because I'm just out in the middle of this hallway, right? Like I'm going to run into this room. I want to get to this hall. I'm going to get to this right side peak. They would I have to I make noise. I would then know there's a guy in there and we would start a fight. But now he hears me coming up. He crouches and he's got a few seconds because I'm not there yet to crouch yeah, yeah. into, okay, a, so, into so an I, angle. I, so I think I, I think I know what you mean. Yeah. Um. In in that like. So I I remember my one of my anatomy of a firefight videos. Yeah. On labs in the basement near the elevator exfil, I like one v five some dudes. They were all like around the corner. Yeah. And me being able to hold the corner and slowly sweep out. Yeah. As opposed to I just hold the corner forever or I sprint and run in like a maniac. Yeah. You can hide a corner. Yeah. You can't really do that without yeah. you know like. One hundred percent. So so I, I I get what you I get what you mean. Um. Yeah. Again, I I, did, I wasn't trying to. <laughs> no, no, I'm no. not trying to gaslight you. I just I these are the questions I gotta ask. No, for sure. I understand. And and once again, people being able to move silently at the slowest speed is tactical. I, like I just don't believe you play the video game. Like it's just once again, the like if we defending a system where if I'm slow walking. And I'm making a bunch of noise that I hear and you don't hear it. That's like, I don't know how you could defend that. Like, I don't know how you so could if, defend that system. If, like, what is, what does tactical mean? You're describing that as tactical. What is that? Like, can, can I tactically move, make noise without making noise? Like, what is like, like, what does that no, mean? Okay, but, but so, but okay. <laughs> I, I, I think I know what they're talking about <laughs> in that, like, you can walk on concrete. Yeah. With rubber soled shoes and make no noise. So so what I what if if you didn't make noise for yourself, yes. would it be fine? It wouldn't be fine. It would be better. I would so I this is a thing where I say, like, my opinion is we abstract it. I think you should be able I think the I think there should be a radius, just like everything is, right? Like a gunshot in Tarkov, depending on how far away is depending on how loud it is. And at some point, if you're on the opposite uh, if you're on the opposite side of the map, you just don't hear the gunshot, like especially if someone's suppressed, right? I think we just take that logic, and I think what what accomplishes 90% of what we used to like complain about um, is like that radius, slow creep. What I hear when I'm like walking on wood and stuff like that, you should be able to hear within like a like a one to two meter radius. Like if somebody's crawling up behind you or up the stairs behind you or something like that, super close to you, you should be able to hear it. So like that same system that we use, which is like, hey, things get quieter the farther they are. I think you should be able to hear people slow creep, but at a much more reduced radius. And that's how we maybe abstract it or whatever to make it more playable, in my opinion. Or once again, it might be fine if you didn't get the information of exactly where I was 150 meters away. Does that make sense? Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like that, that changes it too. That's why I'm saying it's a combination of these things that creates a bad experience. It's hard to even judge any one of them independently because they all create a meta and uh, that's just like hyper unfun. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and so, I mean, like, I, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one like pushing back against this. I don't know if this is like things that, that people in chats are like debating or whatever, but... Um... It's just like one of those things where all together, it, it kind of depends on, I almost feel like you got to sell it differently. The problem isn't that people can move silently, period. Mm -hmm. Because correct the reason why, the reason why people were bush wookies is because you couldn't move silently or, you know, so that, so it's like saying X is a problem Yeah. when it's like, well, it's not X, it's X and Y and Z together that are all interrelated inconsistency and in the clashing between them. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to say this whole time. I feel like every time I'm like, this bug is annoying. We dive super into the weeds of like, why? And what I'm trying what I'm trying you. to say is that like all these things together create a really shitty experience when the audio hasn't gotten any better than it was three years ago. The network mm -hmm. hasn't gotten any better than it was three years ago. The cheating situation, I, I don't freaking know. You know what I mean? It's not better than it was three years ago. So like, that's what I'm saying is that like this combination of we've got the packet loss bug, 
We've got the binaural pop. We've got the invis uh, silent crouch. We've got um, contacts giving an increased range. Which, when I feel like the almost the entire community was, I I hadn't talked to very many people that had ever disagreed with the fact that like contact hearing should be reduced, and they increased it. Like it was just it, it just was crazy. The contact force here from so far away, all of those things smash together, create a really, really bad experience and create a really, really bad, like feeling gameplay. And here's the thing, sans a few people in chat right now that are just like, I don't know, I guess convinced I'm out of my mind. Most people that I talk to in my chat that are like, casual gamers agree like somebody just said i abused the scroll wheel for my own benefit but i wish it wasn't an option like all the time like i'm having conversations with people like this where it's like everybody's like this is dumb but we all do it you know what i mean so it's like yeah i don't know i mean it's i mean that's like the net code like everybody like people used to sprint around corners yeah because you they'd be desynced a week before and but they wish it wasn't a thing yeah um yeah i mean like like listen the fact that you said you'd rather play before the recoil changes means, i don't i don't know means, that anybody else would share that sentiment but <laughs> yeah I mean, if if you feel that way then i like ten thousand percent believe you yeah. that like I, you're at least rational and yeah, consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's so. What I want to ask is, has any has anything objectively <clears throat> like are there bugs that were introduced? I think the invisible player thing was something that wasn't in the first couple weeks. I'm so sorry. Ask that question like, again. I was reading something in chat. Um, I didn't even get through the okay, question. Okay. So. Has the game, not your experience or your feelings about it, but the game okay. gotten worse since the wipe? Like, have bug ten new bugs, a thousand new problems? Yeah, it's actually genuinely hard to tell because I was so focused on just like everything that was super exciting. Like, I know the silent crouch was in like from day one of the wipe. I don't know if the binaural audio pop was this bad early in the wipe. Like, I don't know if this that's getting worse or not. I feel like the crunchiness of the snow really masked a lot of the stuff. The snow was so loud and I feel like the I, game I, I never heard the pop. Got I mean, a lot granted, quieter. I only played for like yeah. 3 days, but I did play for like 30 hours straight. Yeah. Um so I mean, here here's the deal. Nobody like you can say people are inconsistent. Yeah. But this shit is subjective. So I can even if I completely disagree with everything yeah. you say, I can't say you're wrong. If you wish yeah. that you could move silently or that you couldn't or that whatever, yeah. that that's your opinion. Yeah. You can think that whether that's better for the game or not. Again, this is all like subjective stuff. Yeah. When, when people say, you know, like if you said this was the best wipe ever and the game was incredible. Yeah. Nothing has changed. And now it's in the worst state ever. Yeah. That which is all I've heard. Yeah. Is is yeah, is that people have just been saying, like like even in Landmark's responses, yeah, um, his, I, I think the only things I saw him mention was like the binaural audio pop, is like it like makes it unplayable. And to me, it's like yeah. of all the things that have I've ever felt about the game, I've never wanted to put my fist through my monitor or shattered a mouse in the corner yeah. of my room because of. Because I heard somebody too soon. Yeah. You know, so... And that's because... I, I, I'm just trying to... You've never... Try not. And that's because you never played the game when that was an issue. Like, I understand what you're saying, but, like, like it should mean something. And I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm not saying you're saying it doesn't. But it should mean something that people that have 10,000 hours in the game, a lot of people that have 10,000 hours in the game, 9,000 of those hours where the audio... The notorious thing about the audio was there wasn't enough of it. If every single one of those players, Desmond, Glorious, Axel, Landmark, me, are being like, this is worse. 
Like that's just, like you know what I mean? Like I Well, I, no, <laughs> I, I, I pause it though. My hypothesis is that you guys finally fucking figured it out. And you were in a honeymoon phase for a lot longer. I could be wrong. There's no way for me to know what's in your hearts, right? Honeymoon phase of what? The game. Oh no. You 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 didn't get sick of the game and no. the bullshit. No. That's not I, I, maybe it. I'm wrong. Yeah, Again, that's not it. I I can't know what's in all of these other people's hearts and minds. Yeah, for right? sure. But all so I feel like you're I'm not trying to like attack you or anything like yeah. that. You just have to look at it from my perspective. Yeah. I played this white and literally I was like, this is the best the game has been in so long. Yeah. I'm just bored because I played it for too much. For sure. And I'm sick of the shit and I just want a new for game. For sure. For sure. And then all of a sudden people are like, I don't know where, right? Yeah. Oh man, I'm really not having fun with the game. Things are blah. And and all I hear are a bunch of things that don't maybe they're terrible. Everybody's just really fucking bad at explaining how terrible it yeah. is because they they don't seem to compare to the anguish that was you're playing a gun game and you can't use a gun. Yeah. Um and or you're playing a, a game and you can't <laughs> fucking hear anybody or yeah. and the AI just insta kills you and you know like all of those all of these things, right? Yeah. Um now I don't know how much of it has to do with the new fucking armor, and maybe that's no nope. part of it. I mean, that's an annoying thing, but it's not really. But yeah. What... So, so again, like, I, just you have to you have to hear it from my perspective, and maybe I'm probably one of the few people in the world that played for as long as I did, then didn't play. Yeah. Then, then all of a sudden, all at once, start to hear a bunch of people saying how bad it is, and me just wondering if like now everybody's coming around. <laughs> Or, or if, yeah, or if it really is the worst it's ever been, and or you know, or or, or yeah. it's in a bad state. I'm. It's not for me to say. Yeah, I'm not playing. I'm yeah. not in the game anymore. Yeah. So I'm not. I can't say anything other than I just have to wonder and speculate. Yeah. Yeah. I, here's the thing, though. I know the answer, which is you were in the honeymoon phase when you played this wipe. Like you, you like. Does that make sense? Like I don't. Like, that's not crazy to think. They make a lot of good changes. So while we're experiencing those changes, um, um, sorry, I was reading something. It's not crazy to think that when a bunch of new changes come in, I'm focused on those things. Like, I was also in a honeymoon period for a month of this wipe. Like, you know what I mean? Every time they slap a, a a shiny new coat of paint on the car like that is genuinely exciting like it it genuinely is and this wipe was so much more than a shiny new coat of paint like i would i would classify most wipes as a shiny new coat of paint like everybody wipes and everybody likes kind of you know the the early game we get a new map you know nothing really changes but um this wipe we got some meaningful things like i don't think it's ridiculous that we, we, everybody was super excited about those things and acknowledges that those things were implemented better than almost any other features and before being like, wow, this is super exciting and hopefully this starts a trend. But I also don't think it's ridiculous to then be like, none of those things affect the core issues of the game that were there. Sans recoil. Recoil was like, recoil was obviously the biggest thing this wipe and yeah. And um. And, and, but other than that, no, none of the core experiences have changed, except some, in my opinion, audio is worse. Like, I, I just like, that's where I'm at. I think audio right now is worse than it's ever been. There was, when they implemented Oculus Audio, there was like three months where three of the maps didn't have occlusion zones. Remember that, like, interchange, just, that was the worst the audio's ever been. But if we take that away, <laughs> in my opinion... Right now, the audio is the worst that it's ever been. Um, when you when you when you take the fact that it's not better at all than it's ever been, because staircases like all the places that it used to suck, it still sucks. Dorms, resort, underground uh, staircases are still terrible. I still don't hear people running up on me when I should. I still like every single audio issue that was present in the game three years ago. Every single one exists. There, there, there's no part of the audio that's like, well, at least that's better. Nope, it is just as bad. But now, 
we get a bunch of information way farther away than we should. We don't get any information super close when I think that we should get some information. And uh, all the headsets here from farther away, you know, five of them got their ranges buffed. So the engagement distances are pulled out even longer. And so all of the things that, like, because we've talked about this before, all of the things that promoted the gameplay of like, I'm just going to sit in a bush, like all of those things are just worse, not better. You know what I mean? Like it, 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 the, we talked about this a few months ago where it was like, because you can hear people from so far away because X, Y, Z, you know, why wouldn't I just sit in a bush? But now you can hear people from farther away because of the pop. You can hear people from farther away because of the headsets. And now you can kind of wiggle around in that bush and nobody's going to hear like that. That doesn't make any of it better. So I mean, listen, and I'm also like, 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 let's be real how out of touch I am. I never experienced bushwookies ever being a problem in my entire Tarkov yeah. history. Never once. I know everybody's malding right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the comments. <laughs> it was never. Now, maybe I interpreted my deaths differently. Yeah. Or maybe I had different experiences. Yeah. I don't know. For sure. I never. It, my it was either. There was three fucking outcomes. Someone rolled up on me. I never saw them, never heard them, yeah. died, and it was like cool. Yeah. Um I engage with somebody. I should their backs turn to me. They're running. Yeah. And I go to fucking shoot at them and it's like, yeah. oh, and I fucking and then they end up turning around and killing me yeah. to some bullshit, right? Yeah. So maybe there's really only like th those were basically like or, or it was a normal fight where that person just outplayed me. Yeah. Um but and that's the thing. All three of those situations still happen. The inconsistency of the armor means that even with good recoil, sometimes you're laser beaming a guy and they don't die and they turn and they one tap you. The audio is such that if you miss the binaural pop because you were like fighting somebody, you still get run up on by somebody you never see or hear. And if you get the binaural pop, you're so scared of that guy running up on you without you seeing or hear him that you just sit and wait because... I don't want that to happen because like I was talking about this on stream. Somebody was asking why I don't pay contact fours. Um, <laughs> contact fours are like 400 K on the flea market. Those are the headphones that have the farthest range and you can only buy them on the flea. They're like 400 K and people ask, I don't, I don't wear them. And people ask why? Cause they're like, it's objectively better. Like it gives you the best advantage. And I was like, I drew a circle where I was like, this is how far away I hear the binaural pop. Slightly in from that was, this is how far away Comtac 4 is here. Slightly in from that, this is how far away Sordon's here. Slightly in from that, I don't hear anything in this zone. So if I have the binaural pop and I have the Sordon's, why am I paying the 400k for the Comtac 4s? If they get close enough to me, I don't hear them. And if they're far away, I get the binaural pop. Why, like, the Comtac 4s are objectively better, but I was like, so, so you still, so that's what I'm saying. It's like, all those things that frustrated you still happen. The yeah. only way, so here's, I guess here's a good way to explain it. All the things that you frustrate you about the game still happen unless you crab. Yeah, like yeah. silent, like remaining stationary, bushwookie or silent walking are the, like, so you, one could say, well, there's a solution. This bad thing used to happen. This bad thing used to happen. And now there's a door you can open where those things don't happen. That door is be a crab and everybody chooses it, and that doesn't make the game more fun. And by the way, please, 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 I know that I've pissed a whole lot of people off with my opinions here. Like, I just... Oh, bo I, both, of, both of us Yeah, I, <laughs> I know for a fact that, like, Jesse fell off is coming in the comments here, and that's fine. But hear, hear this one thing, if you're going to hear anything. I don't judge any crabs or bushwookies. Sometimes when I die, I make some snarky comment about like, that guy doesn't know where his W key is. Or what, I'm mad at the game. Or whatever, but I'm mad at the game. I crab all day. I crab all the time. I kill people like that. And I've been trying to be a lot better at when I get killed like that. I go, hey, don't hate the player, hate the game. Like, like I, I, I am, this is not a soapbox of me saying people should crab less. This soapbox is they should fix their goddamn video game. And then people wouldn't crab as much. It's not don't crab less. You should be crabbing all the time. If you're listening to this, you should be crabbing all the time. It's the only way to extract an ounce of enjoyment out of this video game. I'm just saying we shouldn't accept that as the only viable answer moving forward for this game. That's all I'm saying. And, and I'm saying that more than ever before, all doors lead to that 
because these doors are still just as shitty as they used to be. And because more people than ever are doing this thing, like I think I said abuse earlier. I don't even, I'm not even saying you're abusing exploits. Like if I said that word, I don't mean that. Like everybody's playing one way more than they ever have before because all these shitty bugs still exist. And the only solution to them is this one gameplay. And yeah, we used to complain about those things before. But what I'm saying is, I don't think it's people just waking up to how bad the game is. Tons of casual players, tons of mid-tier players, tons of guys with 10,000 hours playing the game are, are all agreeing that this is worse than it's ever been. Not Tarkov as a whole box is worse than it's ever been, but the, the, the enjoyment, the engagement with the video game is in its worse than it's ever been because it's like... Why are we, why, there is no variety. You know where the bosses are. You know where the spawns are. You know where the audio is. You just know everything. And if you just crab, you have all the information and you don't have to give up any information. And I do it too, all the time. And so that's all I'm saying is that like, this is just, when the solutions make the game more unfun, we're on a bad, we're just down, we're just going down a bad path is all I'm saying, that the solutions to the old bugs are just new bugs that make the game less fun. And that that just that just worries me. It concerns me. And I get it. And there was some dialogue um, on Twitter uh, with some some people, with some devs who were, were bringing up the like, game dev is hard and maybe they're working on it and this, that, and the other. And I'm not, I'm really not off the wagon on like, BSG's just sitting around taking baths and all their money and they don't give a shit about the community, whatever. Like, I met these people. I talked with them at TwitchCon. Like, these are awesome people. Maybe I'm ignorant. Maybe I'm right. Maybe we're both right a little bit. You know what I mean? Maybe game dev is hard and they are sucking wiener. I don't know. All I'm saying is that, like, I think the thing that frustrates me the most is when people are like, classic Tarkov, whatever. Everyone's super excited around the wipe. And then four months in, they get really mad. And to me, that's, I, I'm like, are we on unicorn land? Because that should be an indictment of the game, not the community. If every six months you put on a new coat of paint and people are excited about it for a month and then they get really frustrated, that should tell you your game sucks. And when there's new coats of paint, it's fun temporarily. Like, how is that an indictment of the community? Now, well, I'm not saying everyone in the community gives good feedback right like yeah, no, i'm no, not I, saying that at all but I, like literally amen I'm going preached crazy. to every, amen preached to everything you said although i'm sure some percentage of those people probably have a similar sentiment to me that four three four months into a wipe or even two months into a wipe when i was vocalizing yeah. serious issues with the game for sure Many of the people who are complaining now about the game being in the state 100%. it's in were the ones that were saying, I don't know, man, I'm having fun. I don't, you know, Listen. whatever. And then the communities that Listen. follow them were saying, I'm fucking old and I'm fucking bad and I'm just a fucking, Listen. you know, mentally ill <laughs> asshole who needs to take out his fucking childhood issues on, right? So, Listen, like, you're when, not when in wrong. reality, I was just right. You're and, but here's the, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing, too, is that we have to... Let's not forget yeah. that this isn't a competition. Correct. It sucked for the Vietnam veterans real bad. You, But you can't say it doesn't suck for all the Zoomers who are like crippling depression yeah. and insane student loan yeah, yeah, debt. Yeah. And they'll can never, you know, like everybody has their fucking problems. Yeah. And this whole grass is greener thing. Like, no, dude, my Tarkov was worse than your Tarkov. Yeah. I don't want, I'm not trying to like say that. Correct. Okay. Like, Correct. Um, yeah. your boy's just trying to understand and, I, and you're absolutely right, dude. I feel for everybody. Yeah. Right. Like, and this is what we talked about before. There's, there's a part of me that's like, I'm, I'm glad everybody's finally on the same page as me. For not sure. necessarily saying that you were wrong then or, or whatever, but like now I'm not the only no. one you who's molding. I legitimately think about this sometimes, by the way, like, I really hope you know that I agree with you and, and I can say this. I can say this really confidently, not just like pandering to your ego as my podcast co-host, because I was one of the guys. I was one of the guys that was like, dude, Vertos is like really negative all the time. Like the devs are working on it. Like it's not that bad. I'm having fun. Like I was that guy. You, I mean, you, and you know that you can say that too. I was like Mr. Positive, like 
it, come on, man. Like they're working on it. Like there aren't any cheaters, man. Like I used to, I used to be like, dude, there are so many less cheaters than you think in this game. Like I used to say that all the time. So I was that guy. You did understand it before a lot of people did. Like, I really, really believe that. Like, you, the the literal, like, you got the shit end of the stick. The, there's, like, 100,000 people that hated you for complaining, and they are saying the exact same things you were saying. Like, there's so many people. But I genuinely don't think, like, that what's happening now is just everyone else like waking up to what to what you realize? And I'm I'm convinced after talking with you yeah. now that that they're that all of these things are a whole new host of separate bullshit. Yeah, that people are frustrated with, and they're perfectly justified in being frustrated with. Yeah, and I um, and I think part of it is like the wound is more sensitive. Like yeah, like. Um, I understand that you got to a point where you like couldn't keep playing, right? Because like your mental health was so bad. But like I have probably all, all you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to say this the right way. The longer the audio goes unchecked, the worse it not unchecked. The longer the audio doesn't get better, the worse it gets. Even if these new bugs weren't in the game, because every wipe more and more people leave the honeymoon phase which makes the community even more toxic it makes the the resentment towards bsg even stronger whether that's justified or unjustified whether they're working on it or whether they're lazy whether they're being paid by the cheaters or whatever what i'm saying is independent of like the hearts and minds of the community and bsg and the game and game dev like independent of all those arguments what i'm saying is that the fact is if you if you want if you're a bsg and you want people playing your game and you want a bunch of people playing it and the audio, which is like a core part of the game, this is just one example. I keep harping on the audio, but it's audio, it's netcode, it's cheaters, all this stuff. If it doesn't get better or worse, more people get more tired of it each wipe. And it's just like going to get worse. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. So I think we're at a point where we're like three, four, five wipes past where you bailed. So many, So much more of the community is even more sore and frustrated about that. And then we have like, four or five relatively new bugs that just like just like right on top of that really sensitive open wound and it's just like god damn it so i mean yeah here's the deal <laughs> i had a different straw that broke my camel's back yeah 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 Right, like it's not like my my threshold, Jesse, was the right threshold. Yeah, 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 yeah. You had to be out. You had to boycott the day I did. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. People had maybe had more patience or whatever. Right, like yeah. and, and sure, some people that said I was wrong about my complaints, maybe they were wrong. But I'm not gonna say yeah. that they are wrong about these issues now because it's not my fucking place. I'm not playing the game. I have no goddamn idea. Yeah. Um, and the, and here's yeah. the thing: is that like ultimately and we can move on is that like when i what what makes me sad is that when i engage with the community it's like i was getting really flustered when i was talking to, i think rare who's who's awesome he's in my chat too all the time like i'm not mad at him if he's still here is i feel like there's so much stockholm syndrome where like what we're talking about is crazy and like super in the weeds and weird and all i'm saying is that like I want, like, I, I just don't know that maybe do, are these, do these people have these conversations at this minute detail about other games, about Hunt Showdown, about Call of Duty? Like, it, it just feels like we've been way off in La La Land. Like, like, that's what I'm saying. What we're arguing about is like, when I say the silent crouch walking thing is busted, people think, people that get, benefit from that think that what i mean by it's busted is i want to remove your benefit and 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 so out of a knee-jerk reaction of self-preservation i don't want this benefit removed they compulsively defend it no it's better no you said you wanted this no 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 bah, 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 bah. and that's where i start to break down because here's Here's, I want PMCs to be able to move quieter. 
I also think the crouch audio bug is stupid. What I'm saying is that like we can't just say one solution was plucked from the sky and it causes four other issues, but it fixes the one we were talking about. So any criticism of that is you trying to take something away from me and you wanted this. You said you wanted this. Like, I start to lose my mind because there are so much more elegant solutions that we well, have you, gone over hundreds of times on this podcast about how PMCs could move quieter, but still create engaging gameplay. No, no. I, they didn't I, do I, that, I, though. I agree with you. I just... I, I need you to stop calling it a solution. There's there's no fucking okay. way it's yeah. intentional. You're right. It's a bug. You're right. You're right. Okay. No, you're right. You're right. But I'm Stockholm syndroming myself because yeah, because it is perceived as a solution. Like the the conversation, dude. You're you're right. That's, if, if, that's if just another are layer. That it's an intentional yeah, thing. That's just yeah. another layer of the inception. It's not a solution. I don't want it to be here because it's not a solution. People defend it because it brings them benefits, so they call it a solution. So I'm not even, it's inception. I'm not even arguing the thing I want to argue. I'm arguing layers down, and it gets so convoluted and in the weeds that I'm not even, I've talked about this before. Dude, man, I can't remember. I have a clip of it somewhere. I've talked about this before. We, we get to a point where nobody agrees with their own points anymore. Like, I'm not even, I don't even like, I find myself in a place where I don't even like what I'm arguing for because I feel like I have to convince you of this before I convince you of this before I convince you of this before I get to my main point, but we never get to the main point and both parties end up just arguing shit like I just don't really th Now you know why I got so sick of yeah. this fucking community, <laughs> dog, because I because people say, "Dude, I want your opinion." And then I give my opinion yeah. and then the conversation is a fucking rectal exam without lube, dude. Yeah. I, like <laughs> it's in no it's in no way fucking yeah. enjoyable. Exactly. Right? exactly. And, and all what we're talking about here, Jesse, is I I miss the chocolate cake I used to have that they then covered with shit frosting. OK, and then they then covered it with vanilla frosting on top. OK, and then I'm sitting here going the vanilla frosting was finally a nice touch. And then they put fucking dog shit sprinkles on top yeah. and dropped it on the ground. And people are saying. I don't really think I like the way this tastes now. And I'm like, but it it's better. But it's got it was vanilla frosting. Because it had vanilla frosting when before it was just shit cake, Dude, right? So it's like, that, how can you say it's worth low key all we're fucking talking low about? Low key, you and me were like, for a second there, I was like, Veritas doesn't get what I'm talking about. That was like like that that was the greatest analogy. It is exactly that. You look at the game and you see things that are objectively better. The vanilla frosting is there. How can you say it's worse? And I'm like, he dropped it on the ground. It's got hair sticking out of it. And he put dog shit crumbles. He dropped it on purpose, dude. They they think the sand from the ground is is good for the... Yeah, thing. yeah. They just dropped it, Exactly. Dogs. And so it's like... It's all... Dude, the shit cake analogy has come back so many times. And it's so good, dude. It's just like... It really... It really talks about it. And so... So I think that's what gets me going the most... Is that like me saying I don't, I think the crouch silent bug is like stupid or the binaural pop is stupid. The like that doesn't mean I want the exact game we have without those things. What I'm trying to say is we should have real solutions, real solutions to problems. And then we wouldn't need a stupid bug you know what I mean? But but it's such a visceral reaction because a lot of people genuinely are winning a lot more fights because they hear someone with the binaural pop, they crouch walk, and they shoot someone they in the back. They control their guns. But, but, but here's the thing, though, is that just like what I don't believe is that anybody enjoys it when it happens to them, right? Like you've, you've played Tarkov enough that you've had enough of the fights where you go, oh, GG's, GG's, you died, and you're just like, oh, like that was such a good fight. GG's. That's what we all want. And then sometimes you kill someone and you're like, that didn't feel good. That didn't feel good. That didn't feel mm. good. 100%. So it's like what we all want. We don't want to always win in Tarkov. But we want to feel for the most part that like we're playing a game. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, yeah, a lot of people get a lot of benefit from the binaural pop, from the contact fours, and from the silent crouch audio bug. And I feel like some people can't see over that. Because I want you to benefit. I want you to have a better experience. I just don't think we're doing it the right way. And two, when those things happen to you, do you find it fun? Like at some point, we all got to run to the extract, right? At some point, we all got to move. 
And when you make a move and somebody shoots you or when you're looting and somebody silent crouch walks up to you, are you having a good time? Are you having so like, are you being like, yeah, this sucks, but at least I can do it because then we're just 50 50 ing. I think we can just make a better game, but we don't ever get to talk about that because we're we're in these arguments about we're just like way off in left field arguing about crazy yeah, and I mean, talk. And, like and, and what you're talking about too is is like conceptually not so different than the recoil. It's a thing yeah. that's symmetrical, but doesn't it's 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 not good even though it's symmetrical. Like yeah, even yeah. though sometimes when I have this shit recoil and I just one tap someone in the head with a random yes. bullet, yeah, like that's that, that might feel, feel good. good. Yeah, you know, especially for the people that maybe didn't have the best aim, yeah. they had, probably had a better, a slightly better chance of killing somebody. Yeah. that was more skilled than them because there was more RNG. Yeah, so it it did this a little bit. Yeah, and maybe this audio, it's one of those things that it's symmetrical. In that you you experience both sides of it, yeah. But you still just wish it wasn't there, and the game would be better without it. Yeah, and for sure, I listen. I everybody streaming Tarkov right now, legit. I feel for you. I'm sorry that it sucks so bad. I wish it wasn't. <laughs> um, and uh, like I told you, so I was always right. And yeah. <laughs> and once again, I really, really, really get. Like I'm as arg as as frustrated as I am. And as much as I do feel like I know a decent amount about Tarkov right now, I am keenly aware of how ignorant I am of how game design works. But I think that that argument... No, know. no, no. But I'm saying... But that's what I'm saying. I think that argument only gets you so far, right? Like, the... the Everybody in the community, for the most part, maybe, you know, I'm, of course, everybody is a stupid word, but everybody in the community, for the most part, agreed. It's kind of weird how far you hear people people away everybody was mad about the perception skill even though it didn't make as much of a difference but but the general vibe is we don't like when other people can hear super far away they made it farther that's not game dev is hard right that's update the spreadsheet for years now we've said it's really stupid that the contact force here at a farther distance everybody agrees with that and most people can't afford 400,000 ruble headsets per raid the people that can afford it hate it. The people that can't afford it hate it. That is updating a spreadsheet. That's not game dev is hard. Audio is hard to fix. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying is I'll give. I will give a little bit. I know I'm ignorant on game dev. I'm not saying you can just fix audio occlusion zones in the game and have it perform well, blah, blah, blah. But what I'm saying is that's not the only issue. And some of these issues are not game dev is hard. Some of them are just updating a spreadsheet and everybody that plays the game is happier. And they won't do Listen, it. Listen, I'm... I'm 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 just gonna say it because I don't give a fuck. I know enough about software to know where my ignorance lies, where yeah. my expertise, where the limit of that is, and there's no excuse. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's 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 literally no bug <laughs> in the history of bugs that should ever manifest itself seventeen different ways over the course of four years. Yeah, with three systems. Yeah, sorry, you're fucking doing it wrong. <laughs> And it's kind of not acceptable, and I don't care if I'm not a game developer. Yeah, I, it doesn't matter because I'm fucking right. Yeah, and if someone wants to give me an argument for why I'm not right outside of yeah. an argument from authority, where yeah, you know, you you don't work there, so, so therefore yeah. you don't know. I mean, listen, if if a brain surgeon does brain surgery on 20 people and 19 of them fucking die. <laughs> you, you don't can't say, have You're not a brain surgeon. It's brain surgery's hard, man. Well, yeah, but what about all the other fucking brain surgeons who don't fucking kill all their goddamn oh patients? Oh my god. You just thank you for that. I, I, that analogy, I, I am uh talking away. That's so perfect. I've been trying to find a way to articulate that for a really long time. Uh, and, and and because I didn't have a way to articulate that, that's why I always had to qualify with like, I do know that I don't know what I don't know, but I, but I still think I can know that I don't know what I don't know and be confident about X thing. And that's just a great way to say that without having to like go deep, being like, I don't have to be a brain surgeon to know that if this guy killed 19 out of his 20 patients, I don't want to that have that guy operate on my brain. When all these yeah. other surgeons 
only kill three of their 20 patients. Everybody's got issues. But when we look around the industry, I want to go to yeah, a brain like, surgeon that doesn't kill 19 of his 20 patients. The more experience you have with either software development to a certain degree, and then much more of a degree game development, the more you have, I can, I think, a more realistic and nuanced opinion about wh exactly what and when certain things are reasonable. Yeah. Like when someone on day one of a wipe, when there's a, a an invisible player bug or, or something that yeah. some new bug, right? Let's just say it's a new bug. They're like, how the fuck could this happen? It's like, it's actually not unreasonable that there'd be some new thing. Yeah. That would kind of come out of nowhere and. Give them a little bit to fix it and they patch it and it's not a big deal and nobody yeah. should complain. The audio has been broken for so long in so many different ways yeah. past the point where you being a game developer doesn't matter. Yeah. Because I've played a hundred video games in the last six years yeah. and not one of them yeah. has had... 10% of the yeah. audio issues that Tarkov has had. Yeah. A and it, it doesn't matter if it's hard or not. Yeah. It, it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be. Yeah. And, 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 and this isn't anybody trying to say like, like the whole point of this is not to say they're bad developers. No, it's, it, it's, it's, it's just saying it's unacceptable. Yeah. Maybe. You know, like maybe that brain surgeon, his entire family died in a car crash before he had to do yeah. the 19 surgeries all at once because he was the only dog. OK, it's, yeah, it's it's more reasonable and understandable why, but it still shouldn't happen. Yeah, it still shouldn't be a thing. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. <sighs> Speaking of brains. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of brains, I want to take a second and thank the sponsor of this episode, and that is BetterHelp. And holy cow, do I need some better help? <laughs> no, um, thank you so much to uh to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Uh, as you guys know, we've worked with BetterHelp for a long time. We really enjoy doing so. And there are an online platform where you can get counseling or therapy, get connected with somebody that you can talk to, whether you're interested in just bettering yourself, being more efficient with your time. That's something that recently I've been aligning a lot with of just like, I don't necessarily have a crisis, but I just feel like I'm not extracting enough out of the time that I have as I could. And I feel like I'm kind of like letting my own mental get in the way. Like that's like so valuable to be able to talk to somebody about or whether you have something like really serious that's going on in your life or just happened in your life, having somebody to talk to, having access to somebody that is licensed, that is there explicitly to help you is invaluable. Yeah, not everybody has uh, someone like Jesse that they can get on <laughs> twice a week yeah. and mauled and mauled about, you know, whatever and not have to worry about judgment or, you know. Yeah. Most people don't have that, uh, but everybody needs to have somebody to talk to and having somebody sure. that's a professional that's qualified, um, like like we've said so many times yeah. before, is is honestly one of the most important things you can have in life. For sure. Um, uh, being able to being able to use this platform in a way that's infinitely more convenient yeah. um, to be able to find someone to talk to, be able to do all your messaging, scheduling, all of your appointments digitally. Yep. It's it's game changing for therapy and mental health as a for whole. For sure. Yeah. So it 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 existing entirely online like this is just one of those things that feels like it really benefits from that because you can uh do all your scheduling super easily, you can look at calendars super easily, you can find somebody that you connect with so much easier by just swapping if somebody you didn't vibe with. Um, you can pause, you can take weeks off, you can write notes. Like it just, it feels like it works really well. So, uh, BetterHelp is awesome. Um, learn to make the time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. You can visit betterhelp.com slash podcast today to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash podcast. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. That was like the longest we've ever gone. I know, I know. Um, I, I maybe cover this real quick and then uh yeah we should we we should 
Um, so, yeah. So this is something I think maybe we talked about on the Patreon. Um, yeah. So let me think. I'm pretty sure we talked about this on the Patreon where, uh, and, and kind of didn't want to give too much attention yeah. to it uh, for reasons that will become clear in a bit. Um, but there's been a little bit of an update that's like kind of kind of worth talking about. <laughs> um, so there there was this uh, this guy, uh, a content creator, 10 IQ gaming, um, that his his entire channel was dedicated to just like completely shitting on other content creators. It was just he did a video on you, of, right? He did. He did like four. Yeah, on me we we and a bunch I th- of live streams. Think we talked about like there was like one that we like dove into on the podcast one time. I don't remember which one. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, as as a quick summary, okay, because you want to talk about toxic gaslighting, whatever. Yeah. Um, during one of my streams, actually, it was it was the um when everybody was looking at. What was that other that that other streamer that everybody was oh, talking suddenly about? Toast. Was the whole suddenly toast thing, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. When all the cheating stuff was going on, I wasn't even playing Tarkov. I was playing something else. Yeah. Right. But someone was like, "Hey, you know, want to look at the? Have you look at this? You know, whatever." Um. So I was going through, and I was doing the reasonable, middle ground, skeptical, <laughs> rational, looking at things and going, "That thing is not sus." That thing is sus. Yeah. This is nothing. This is explainable. This is yeah. actually, you know, like like there were OBS glitches that like the dude was clearly cheating, but people were looking at like packet loss and yeah. being like, that was clearly his aimbot. It's like, no, because you can see his stamina bar is like. Yeah. You know, so you would he actually was just dropping packets. So that whole snap wasn't like yeah. doing a reasonable investigation. OK. Yeah. Now. This guy what he basically did, and he admitted to all of this, and I've got all the receipts. He's it admitted it in my chat, um, that he and a bunch of people in his community all got together in a Discord and said, "Let's fuck with Veritas. Oh yeah, Let's get under his skin. Let's try to upset him." <clears throat> and and what he said was, he said that um, that I was being totally reasonable and that he had to push me yeah now he was faking it he was trolling with a whole bunch of people as a coordinated effort yeah which is some real degenerate toxic (laughs) shit right um to try to get under my skin just saying really stupid stuff to the point where i'm like why are you fucking like yeah how are any of you making these arguments like yeah yeah because i thought i thought that that People were either being and and half of them were being super rude, being like get a fucking real job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So of course I'm like eat shit. Like who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah. You know, like giving people what they what they were giving to me, they yeah. get back right. If people say get a real job, you low life, whatever, I'm gonna say your parents never loved you. <laughs> fuck off, right? Like, yeah, because it it's the internet, and if you can't fucking dish it, then don't mm-hmm. be a douchebag. Okay. Um. Now. He orchestrated this whole thing just to clip it, snip it, cut it all up, take it out of context, and then make a montage of me being rude and mean and toxic to my community. Yeah. Even though he said, oh, well, well, normally you're reasonable and level-headed, so we had to push you to get this reaction. But, dude, it's just fun. It's just all. Yeah. Nobody nobody actually thinks that, uh, that it was, like, real. Everybody knows we were trolling you, even though... He says he made it clear. He never made it clear. Just real yeah. douchebag shit, okay? Yeah. And then, of course, multiple times he came in, I actually kind of, like, forgave him, and then he kept trying to defend himself. So then finally, after a while, I, I won't get into the details, but in a nutshell, he was a clear, admitted, dishonest, dishonest yeah. toxic, gaslighting liar. Yeah. And he was just doing it for content. And it's all admitted. Anybody wants to fucking doubt me, come in. I'll show you all of his chat logs because he admitted to all of it. Yeah. Okay. Um. 
And then he also made a ton of content about other cheaters. Yeah. These other streamers who were cheaters, other people, whatever. And then made a ton of other, like, it's all just hit pieces where it's like, zoom in on your faces when people are frustrated, talking to trolls, yeah. whatever. Make them seem like assholes, right? Yeah. All the worst kinds of shit. Well, he just came out a couple days ago and said, I've been a rage cheater for years. In Tarkov? In Tarkov in every game. CS, Tarkov, all of it. I don't know if he was going to be exposed and he did it preemptively. But <laughs> now, now there's a little asterisk here in that <laughs> there's like a 2% chance he's doing this to try to be relevant That's and he's going to try to... But but I don't I, I don't if you watch the video, he legitimately is kind of like it doesn't seem like that. Yeah. If he does, he's just doing it for attention. But I I I, I don't it, it, it just it wow. yeah, it doesn't make sense. Uh, I, I he also deleted a bunch of the like he deleted a bunch of the videos he made exposing cheaters. And he and he said he did that. Mm. Because it's like I'm I'm gonna delete that content. I'm yeah. sure the videos about me are still up, right? But like, um, so I don't know. It it just tracks that. And he was talking about the rage cheating in so many games, and about how he was able to see these people cheating because he yeah. knows what cheating looks like. Because if it so, was a troll, if he was saying he was a cheater but not, you troll for attention, and it would you would get more attention if you left those investigation videos up. Because people would be like, dude, look at this. And he would just be farming that. But if he really did take it down, that is interesting. Oh, yeah, my God. So a bunch of people were coming in and like, did you hear about the new 10 IQ? And I'm like, literally, I I, I don't yeah, I don't want to think about this fucking clown because yeah. he has just proven time and time again to be dishonest, manipulative, toxic, gaslighting yeah. person who feeds off of negativity and has no regard for anyone's mental health, just fucking harassing people, being... Oh, and then had, like, the balls in a pinned comment to say that, like, you guys need to stop defending Veritas because, like, and coming after me, like, it's not fair. Like, real fucking pansy-ass bullshit. Dude, spineless coward. Hell? Spineless. Like, it's just laughable how the guy's like, bro, it's just a joke, you know, whatever. And then people would be like, wow, dude, you're terrible. And he's like, oh, what do you mean? Don't give me such a hypocrite. Yeah. All the worst things, right? And then he comes out and says, I've been a fucking rage cheater in all these games for years, and I just need to get it off of my chest and whatever. And it's like, it doesn't surprise me yeah. that a dishonest, a dishonest, toxic asshole would also be a cheater. It's almost like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's I just just cra like I genuinely didn't know that. I feel like I heard a few people say like, "Did you hear about the new 10 IQ drama or something?" But I just like was like, "No, I didn't hear that." And his in his <sighs> video, his video, like, don't even don't watch it. Don't fucking yeah, go give him any of the views. It. Yeah, I, I want to be able to talk about this because it's worth talking about. While at the same time, he doesn't deserve the views or no. the attention. His video is just him talking. For 10 minutes about, yeah, you know, I cheated. You know, I used to do rage cheat. And it's just him rambling about boring, dumb shit. Wake up. <laughs> like, he just goes into a flat earth rant. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that would be that would be meta as fuck. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just absolutely fucking. That's mental. Absolutely fucking laughable. Um, Dude. That is unreal. That is yeah, unreal. I, I, it was it's just so so funny how uh dude how pain and suffering like that's the stuff just makes sense like i mean we've talked about this a million times right like that's the stuff where of course of course of course the advice is like try not to let the trolls get to you try to you know ba 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 try to focus on positivity not negativity as a content creator but like that's the stuff of nightmares that's the like a dude literally admitting to just like having nothing better to do than getting a bunch of his friends together to intentionally just troll and frustrate somebody to the point of frustration so that they can clip it, take that even out of context and make a video about how stupid of a content creator you are. Like that is the... 
like you no reasonable person could could say that see that happen and then be like yeah man just don't let it bother you like that's the most <laughs> like that's the lowest stupidest shit ever oh my gosh that's crazy mm -hmm. that's insane yeah i just thought um I, w I was like trying to avoid it for so long because i'm like i just don't care about this fucking dude anymore like yeah i don't care about this dude just leeching off of any everyone else yeah and he, oh, and then one of the one of my favorite things was that he admitted he's like I even I even tried to make some content that was like positive and nobody watched it so I just had to go back to it's like how fucking transparently you don't spineless yeah, are you oh like my holy God. fuck dude okay um last kind of thing is like arena just like some quick updates because I find it fascinating like um. That we talked a little bit last week about the questions, about how remember they were like, uh, they added the questions when you close the game. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, we can pull I, those I up. Yet. I let haven't me, looked at them either. Up. When did did you send them to no, me? No, it was in the, the a Patreon Discord. Oh, oh that's yeah, where. Yeah. 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 So, question one was, which mechanics do you miss the most? They didn't say this, but I think they mean from Escape from Tarkov. <laughs> Because ability to create full custom presets with certain restrictions, ability to customize existing presets, synchronization and cross progression of EFT and Tarkov Arena, character skill leveling for all players, character skill level setting for all players, dailies and weekly tasks, team color display on the screen. I don't know. I don't what I don't understand what, what mechanics do you miss the most? Some of those are like are these things you want? Some of these are like yeah, so miss, uh, that's like a language thing. Whereas, like, yeah, whereas, like, I, th I think in English that miss is always it used to be there and now it's no longer there. Yeah. Um, but almost whereas, like which things do you want the most? Yeah, which things do you wish were in the game? Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, what things do you wish for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah, so that's fascinating because, um. That was just an interesting question because some of it was like fully custom presets you know what i mean um we've talked a lot about their decision to do the whole like tier system and and all that kind of stuff um the progression so that's fascinating uh, yeah see like for, so personally to me ability to create presets and customize existing yeah i don't give a fuck about the pr cross progress no i don't give a fuck about character skills they've never been relevant to me ever in either game yeah really i mean other than endurance basically yeah um I don't give a fuck about daily or weekly quests. No. Um, team color display on the screen is one of those things that's like would be an improvement. Yeah. I agree. I don't even know. Does does like throw it down in the comments. Does anybody want <laughs> the synchronizing of the two games? <laughs> like, I feel like they want that. And I don't know. I Yeah. And I still don't know how it's does. even going <laughs> to I still don't know how it's even going to work. I don't either. Right? Uh, because un unless they synchronize the wipes. Yeah. Which, because right now it's like staggered where it's yeah. like they wipe one and then wipe. So at some point, one of them is going to have to have like an extended period of time where they. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh, I Second question is, which mode would you like to see sooner? Co-op PVE with quests, team deathmatch with player respawn or bomb plant mode with attack and defense? Um, None of them. I want free for all and one v one. True, I think free for all needs to come so badly. I agree, but I do think that these three are like really healthy things for the game too. All three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people want the PVE one really bad. That would be actually that that would be probably the most actual thing you could say is training for Tarkov, <laughs> because the PVP in Arena is so different than it is in Tarkov. You know what I mean? But like being able to fight the bots would actually be nice. And then bomb plant. It is and it is and it is. Yeah, you're um, right. There's definitely a lot. The muscle memory is true. Valuable. Um, um, I still, I still think. I, I hope I'm wrong on this, but my, um, what do you want to say? My um, uh, prediction. Yeah. My prediction. Hope I'm wrong. Is everybody who's excited about the PVE is going to hate it? Because the AI is going to be so bad, it's not even going to be fun to play. Yeah, I hope I'm wrong. No, I 
I think that's, I think, I say, I'm excited for the PvE mode too, but I kind of think that that's a fair. Um, what tier do you currently enjoy playing the most? Tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. Uh, <laughs> have it unlocked tier 2. Yeah, I'm so glad they included yeah, have it unlocked tier 2. Yep. Have it unlocked tier 3. Yeah, sorry. If, I haven't, uh, I haven't had a month off of, <laughs> of work. If you uh, had all presets open, which tier would you play on more? Okay. Uh, wait, I mean, every, everybody's going to say three, tier three, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, like the game is like the power fantasy of Tarkov isn't, you know, no butt suck AKs. I think there's a lot of hilarity and fun to be had with the like low tier kits, but it's a good palette cleanser. Exactly. It, but I don't you play tier three for six months and it yeah. gets bored, right? But if you could only pick one to play forever, everyone's tier three. Choose three. Uh, which game elements would you like to see improved? Cleanup crew, aim punch. Armor mechanics, neck and armpit. Wow, aim punch. Whoa, 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 whoa. Aim yeah. punch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, medicine usage mechanics, preset tier system, experience required to unlock presets. Can I check all of the boxes? Please. Yeah, what the fuck? Like, that is a fascinating... Every, everybody wants all of those That's things. a fascinating thing because it's like, like aim punch, I would have never in a million years thought that they would put that on a list of like we want to gather your feedback about. But or medicine. The usage. other side of that coin means they are actually listening to the feedback. To know to even put that on the list means that they're hearing people complain about it. So all of the above, please, BSG. Like for your arena shooter, like please, 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 all of those things. Make them better and then also bring those to Tarkov because they all suck at Tarkov too. But yeah, that's fascinating. Mm. Uh, and then what makes you the most frustrated when playing the game? Performance, matching time, server connection stability, desync between real actors and kill camera, or sound positioning. Interesting. The desync between the real actors and the kill camera doesn't bother me. The desync between the real player and me playing. And real play, the real player yeah, and real player. Yeah, it's real player and real player. That's what bothers me, not the kill cam being like, oh, man. Um, so those are the questions. Uh, to me, honestly, see, that's the, the weird thing is that, like, performance wasn't really an issue. No. Match for me personally, match loading time was never an issue. Yeah. Um, now there were, I mean, there were times where playing solo, yeah, I think playing solo when I had high ARP, it, yeah, before the wipe was like I'd sit for fucking ever and then I would I'd go with two other people and we'd get in in less than five seconds. Yeah. Um, server connection stability, I never had problems with that. No sound like. It feels like there's so many problems <laughs> that make me more frustrated. That's like and only. Oh, and honestly, sound, sound was po we'll see, but everything. sound positioning. See, now this is one of those things where yeah. it makes me. It makes me. It I was see, never I, positioning. Yeah, I know exactly. Like as soon as you said, well, this is one of those things. I went all the way down and I agreed with you. I was like, yeah, it wasn't necessarily positioning. It was like, it's not there. <laughs> They're gonna spend six months and be like, we improved the positioning. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 wait, that wasn't what we wanted. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I still just don't we, hear anything. <laughs> yeah. It, before it was a chocolate shit cake, and now it was a vanilla shit cake. We heard you guys. Yeah. We heard you that you didn't like the chocolate shit cake. Dude. So we that's... made it a vanilla shit cake. <sighs> no. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no. yeah, 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 yeah. That's, <laughs> yep, 100%, dude. Um. So, and and, and so since then, since this questionnaire, they've done some updates. Um, they did an update where they reduced the amount of XP to unlock tier two presets was reduced by 25%. And the amount of uh, XP to unlock tier three presets has been reduced by 45%. Now, this is one of those things. I don't want to sound like a dick. I'm glad one of the criticisms was it takes forever to, to upgrade. But this is one of those things where it's like, how much can you put the thing on sale before you start to question why are we doing this? Does that make sense? This is the second time they've reduced it by a significant amount. And it's like, at what point does the difference between tier one and tier three kits be such a negligible amount of XP that we're wondering why are we doing this tier kit system? Now, this isn't mm -hmm. me saying that they should have left it high. I'm just saying it's interesting because it's like, I hope that they're doing this as a stopgap while they consider maybe the way the system works just isn't 
because equally it's equally as ridiculous for it to be a million XP to get from level tier one to tier three. It's equally as ridiculous for it to be 10 XP because in both systems, you're like, why are we doing this? What are we doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's either, it's either grindy. So it's an investment or it's point. It's like a pointless mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I, I can't conceive of a number that's like the current system where it feels good. Yeah. At this number. Now, if we're doing, if we're asking what should we do temporarily while we come up with another solution, I would say discount it so people could play. So the fact yep. that we've actually seen them ask questions, like the questions we just read, some of them were like, do you like the preset system? You know, blah, blah. that means, okay, okay, discount it, make the game more fun in the short term. But I hope that in addition to that, they're like genuinely considering like modifications to the system. They did another update uh, the next day. This update will be aimed at optimizing the matchmaking al algorithm as well as reducing matcher, uh, reducing player matching time. Not sure how well that worked, but that's something a lot of people were frustrated and complained about, and hopefully it's better. I haven't played. Boom. This was fascinating. And maybe I'm reading into it too much, but um, please, uh, the update is finished. Please download the update via the launcher. We recommend selecting multiple regions with acceptable ping to increase the matchmaking speed. Like... My uh, the way I interpreted that was like, not enough people are playing, so it's like select more regions, please, <laughs> so, so you can queue with people. But I just thought that was funny. Um, wait, 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 read that one more time. Uh, we recommend selecting multiple regions with acceptable ping to increase matchmaking speed. So I just I I just wonder if because some. Like the meta for so long in Tarkov itself was to like not do auto, yeah, to just choose like one, one. yeah, and then people would complain that their raids were dead or what, blah blah blah, right? So it was always like, I wonder how many people just have it, yeah, like that, and then they complain. So that BSG is like, just choose multiple, like, what the fuck, yeah, I mean, could be, could be, very well, could be, um, <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, so I just thought some of that was interesting. I thought the questions were interesting and the fact that they've made some changes. I, I mean, I think like it's not worth spending a whole lot of time on. Both of us are in the exact same spot. We both want Arena to be great. We both have talked ad nauseum about its limitations and what we don't like about it. Um, I will still continue to root for it and hope that they like seeing like them addressing putting aim punch like on that list is like, hey, man, maybe there's a snowball's chance in hell that they're like willing to turn the ship around you know what i mean we'll see so um but that is the stuff that is the escape from tarkov news if you made it this far uh you're a real one and i hope you yeah i don't know i hope you understand like i i feel like this was this was this was jesse's turn to just giga mauled and like as as per usual, I am hyper aware that like, you know, people are going to get 20% of the way through and hear me just be like, it's all stupid. And then just be like, Jesse hates the game. But I hope that hear, hear us both mauled unreasonably before we reasonably caveat yeah, and, and yeah, come to like the to like appropriate 100%. But middle so ground. if you made it this far, I hope you understand that it's like that the uh I, for a long time, was one of the people that was, like, very hypercritical of the community. I was like, the community, blah, blah, blah. And I just think that the community is largely a reflection of, like, the direction we're going. I'm not saying that negativity is is warranted or deserved. I'm not saying you, you should never be a dick or, or, like, be a douchebag to somebody on Twitter. I, I think many people in the community give really, like, not helpful feedback. Like, cheating is a great example of that, where if we suspect someone's cheating, all of a sudden these, like, reasonable clips get, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like that. But I think the core of that, past all of that bad stuff, is just like, I'm just worried that we're heading in the wrong direction with some stuff, you know what I mean? And I think that that is more of an indictment of the game than the community. And people wanting to provide feedback or changes to that game isn't inherently them trying to take things away from you. You know what I mean? So like, that's, I think where I get hung up a lot, but at the end of the day, I don't know, man, we'll see cope 
hard for the Unity 2023 upgrade. All that's the audio, the net code, it's all going to be perfect after that. They're just waiting until that comes, you know, I'll, I'll cope with you, with you all. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys for hanging. If you want more content like this, even more of two dudes complaining about video games. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Patreon.com slash the podcast pod. We have a Patreon. You can get early ad free access to these episodes. We do an additional episode every week. It's pretty dope. A lot of engagement with the community. We take tons of questions and some really cool conversations have come as a result. Yeah. Uh, lots of IRL stories. Yeah. Lots of deep lore. Yeah. About both of us. So uh, if you're interested in that, check that out. It'll be linked below. Thank you guys so much for hanging. We appreciate you. And we'll definitely see y'all on the next. Peace. Peace.